YouTube, Brian Phillips. We have a box and we're gonna open it today and it's amazing. Thank you, Rob, for being so patient with us. Rob had this sent out because he is so obsessed with this amazing plane that he's like, you must review it. And I was like, oh, okay. But we kind of have our hands full, right? It's the exact second. So it's been a few seconds, so thanks for waiting. Oh, yes, the RV8. As you can see here, so we're gonna unbox this. This is from Flex Innovations. Yes, we will have links. You can help support us. I just found something on here. Oops. Not setting up fail safe can cause an unsafe condition which may result in damage to the product, personal injury, and cause serious or fatal injury. Ooh. Okay. So that's so not serious. I'm, that's, don't do that. Okay. We will not. not setting up. Not we that. will not not set up okay. fail safe. Wow. Amazing. Look at this. It's a plane. We're going to see how good it really is. There's been some different people that have reviewed this plane in the past and uh, we have no problems with other people reviewing other things. We just have our own little flavor, so we'll see what flavor this comes out for us. Is so, it gonna come out of the box? If it'll come out of the box, there's, there's just a little bit of vacuum. Oh, there it goes, it's coming. I'm not saying it sucks, but it does like the box. <laughs> oh boy, would you look at that. So this is the RB8, and it has an advanced flight controller system, really? Okay, I guess we'll figure out what that means. Oh, it looks like, looks like Flex DSMX compatible remote receiver or Spectrum DSMX. Boy, I didn't know that. It'll also do SRXL and SRXL2. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Hmm. See, look at that. I didn't know that. That's the first time learning about it. So this has the super plug and fly with Aurora AFCS. So it's the advanced flight controller system. Okay. I have to assume. Okay, so this thing is uh, 1,280 millimeters. It's calling for a 13, eight, 1300 to 1800 milliamp 6S. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look. Yeah, I know. I already saw that. That's really weird. Your time starts now. That is very weird. <laughs> Hold on. Do we even have a size like that? Hold on a second. Let's see if we've got one yeah, like that. That is a weird size. 1500 6S? Are you kidding me? Oh. We happen to have this. Do you remember when we used this dainty little creature? <laughs> I do remember that. I do remember. We started, well, wait, is that? Oh, that's 14.8. This is the 6S. It got a little bit. It's a little, it's a little, a little chunky. It works though. what so. that's like. Oh yeah, yeah, I do too. I don't think it needs 100C. 100C? I don't know why well, that'd be a problem. Plus. So all I'm gonna say is this is a weird size, so we're just gonna use this, I guess, maybe. Okay. So we'll get those charged up in a little bit. I guess, honestly, I'd rather use a different size, but since it's 6S, it's like, you know, you gotta have the right size. So we'll go with that. Um, so this thing must be a powerhouse. Did you see the less than one hour build time? <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry for your speakers. Yes. I said your time we'll starts now. We'll link to the now. speakers in the video description. We should below. totally link to speakers. We should. New PC speakers, new surround sound speakers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd be a good idea. We should definitely we do, should that. do that. Okay. <laughs> Next on the agenda, Brian Phillips RC. Figure out some company that wants to help us promote their speakers. We do weed whackers, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> Get out! I cannot figure out how to open this box. I'm, you know, this is. We this is usually, this most people clip this stuff out of their videos, but we want you to get the full scope of what you're getting into. And all I've got to say is this thing is well packed so far. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, good Lord. Oh, it's one of these. I don't know if it's gonna fall off the bottom, so I gotta be careful. Okay. So if you guys are new to the channel, Brian Phillips RC here. Ooh, I'm Brian Phillips, Megan is a camera crew, my wife of many, many, many years, yes. I don't call her camera crew after we're done filming. Nope. Don't get any ideas. <laughs> just when we're filming. And it's only to annoy the naysayers. Yep. And there's a lot of you out there. So, so sorry. Thank you for watching. You keep bringing it up. We appreciate you. We appreciate you being here with us to complain in the comments below. We will be glad to see them and chuckle as we earn the ad revenue on your patronage. <laughs> but for all of the rest of you who actually come here because you enjoy our content, and thanks for being here with us. Special thanks to our Patreons. And uh, our Patreon, one of our Patreons sent us this plane, which is crazy. And uh, we hope you guys don't start doing that because 
then we feel super bad that we can't get to them right away. Totally. But it was still super nice. Okay, cool. So you talk about putting your money where your mouth is, right? Yeah, no kidding. All right, so Flex Innovations. We've never done a Flex Innovations plane, so this is super exciting for us. It's an RV8 it's and 10E. Super PNG. Super plug and play. Okay. Stop! Oh. Hmm. 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 Okay, not gonna, not, not gonna do that. I'm gonna continue again. I do not know age is 14 plus, dang it. No, sorry. We have to put the pants on. Oh, you. Yeah, Never. we do. Okay, so we're Let's gonna continue on. Let's just take it out of the box before we read the manual. We'll skip the instructions anyway. All right, so far so good. Well, well packed. Mmm, beautiful, amazing. Let's pull this thing out of the sleeve. Oh yeah. Ooh, look at that, RV8. We've got some vortex generators here over the ailerons. Big surfaces. Inboard flaps. Jeez, those are big servos. Look at the control arms. And you Look, know what I noticed? They're already installed. Relax, it may not be that way all the way around. This is definitely a 3D plane because we have vortex generators on both the top and the bottom. Quick disconnect, looks like Hextronics. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that'd be an 8S connection. And a some sort of an aluminum rod. And then this has a balsa wood. I mean, the, the wing is rock solid. I mean, it doesn't twist at all but it's hollow core, okay? So feel how heavy it is. It's slick, oh it's one of those where it's like slips, whoop, yeah. slips out of your hand all the way across the counter. Okay, so we're gonna continue onward. So guys, if you like this type of content, long format, waste an entire afternoon watching Brian build it when you could be ordering it and flying it yourself, then you'll love Brian Phillips RC. So if you're into watching other people do what you wanna do, then you will love Brian Phillips RC. But really, at the end of the day, we encourage you guys to get out there and do it yourself. And you can just watch us when you're really serious and maybe toying between two or three different planes. What the heck? They put the control arms on, but they don't put the motor in? <laughs> Jeez, fire that Chinese kid. I mean, adult that works in a perfectly legitimate, ooh, look at that. Interesting. Hmm, potent, I don't know what that means, but I'm, I'm sure it's some super common brand that we should be aware of that we're not. Okay, and then we have a cow here. Looks pretty straightforward stuff. Okay. A couple screws to pass through. You know, you wouldn't have to put that in a bag if it was installed. But there again, this thing is like literally. It's a pretty tight box. I mean, it's there. They'd have to add like four inches to the box. And sometimes that's a difference between shipping and not. Remember, when they size these things, they size them for shipping from China to here. Yep. Aluminum. Grab that and pull. Mm, uh, just kidding. It wasn't quite that strong. I would have bent it for sure. If I was skinnier, maybe not. <laughs> it's got a nice finish to it. Yeah. I don't know if they painted that or if that's just, oh, there it is. Flex Innovations RV810 trademark. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, it looks really nice. nice. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely metal. Def, definitely metal. Def, definitely. All right, so here we go. We got the other wing. This one has a JST coming off of it. Why? Wait, the other one did too. Oh, I didn't know it's a JST. Okay, these have embedded hinges, by the way. I don't know if I told you that. One, two, three, one, two, three. Reinforced tops. Kind of uggo, but still not a bad, not a bad match. Decals have good lamination, only a couple of air bubbles. Big. Could you read that name on the servo there, oh, camera hold crew? Hold on a second. I can't tell what the heck it says. I don't either. I'm sure it's probably some brand we should totally know yeah. what it is, but they do seem like they're high quality. So as we know from people have told us things about how nice Flex is, and until now, we've never experienced one. So if this thing sucks bad, it's gonna be really disappointing to have to bring Bad information here. We don't like giving you guys bad news. We don't like giving bad news. That's why you stop doing dynamos. Yes. Because they suck. Ooh, ooh, hold on. Oh, it's, it's, eh, mm, it's, it's firm enough to keep it shaped. Yeah, 
It's but it's not soft enough to be squishy. It's yeah. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the soft er tires on the T28. We haven't showed them those. Shh. Super secret. Okay, so we're just gonna put these right here. She's these. On the website. Huh? They're on the website in look. case you want to buy them. Oh, look, and they have like little O-rings on there. Yeah, I wonder if that's that. so that it'll like keep the space, or if that's just to slow it down. I don't know. We'll put them there. Put them there until we figure it out. <laughs> Um, all right, so we got a nose cone. Ooh, it's in one of these these matte bags. I mean, there's something special about that. Ooh, okay, let's get the spinner out. Hmm, okay. Looks like it's painted. Mm -hmm. Why the heck did they, oh, it was white and then they made it black. Somebody Maybe ordered the wrong color. The yeah, well, no, I mean, sometimes they do that because you know, you get a better, more poppy finish to it. So I understand why they do that. It's cool. Way to go, Flex. So far, so good. Haven't found any disqualifiers yet. Pull this out. As you can see, look, wow, amazing. I wanna get the fuse, but I'm gonna save that for last because I know you guys are like, just take the fuse out, Brian. I've been watching for hours. It's only been 11 minutes, people. What the heck? That's clear all the way down to here. That's weird. This goes all the way down to here. I wonder if they're trying to get extra strength out of it. It looks like it's got a little yellowing to it though, which is kind of eh, maybe not so much. Oh, what the hey? Look at that. That LED goes, what? It's a whole strip. Is this like a night flyer? I don't know. If it is, that's pretty cool, but I, I wasn't expecting it. That's okay, so we'll find out. Okay, so we have, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to make this not fall out, so that's why I'm holding it upside down, okay. Spring loaded is mounted to the rudder portion, but there is an embedded hinge here and here. Rest is pinch hinge with no reinforced tape, okay? Uh, soft foam, but very light. So good EPO, um, hollow core two-piece wing design, uh, which is nice. I mean, it looks like they use just China glue here to hold the front and back halves together, but they get a very thick Cord. I don't know if it's called a cord on the vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizers, but we'll just go with it and pretend like it does count. Oh, here's the pants. Yes. Oh. Okay, so personally, you may not want to wear pants, and believe me, I get it. No, it's true. I get it. I get not wanting to wear pants on your planes because the only thing that happens when you wear pants is it just makes it longer to get to where you're off. where you're going. That's right. Well, and sometimes what happens is the pants rub the squishy things. Yeah. And you just gotta rip them off. So some people will opt to put a bush tire on. And so these pants become a non-issue, okay? You just literally leave the pants off. That's very ugly right there, mm. but it's gonna be covered, thank yeah. goodness. Um, color matches, not so good. I don't know what is going on with this. It must have been something in the milling process. Maybe they have like a trimming machine and there's some like lubricant that gets on there. I don't know. It's kind of gross, but yeah. anyway, we'll just keep that. No big deal. It's not like the biggest deal here on Brian Phillips RC. We try to show you the whole picture of exactly what we're dealing with. That doesn't mean that it's always pretty. It doesn't mean that we're trying to beat up the manufacturers. Not everybody can be huge multi-million dollar budget planes. Okay. So not every manufacturer is going to be able to do that. Like the big guys. And Flex, make no mistake, is not one of the big guys, even though they would like to be, and they do a good product from what we understand. And obviously we're reviewing them now, but not because they work with us. They have pretty much exclusively ignored everything we've ever said to them. So I guess favor to you, Flex. Maybe you should return our emails. Okay, here we go. So look at this, look at this. That, that pinch hinge is so dang thin, look at it. It's like razor thin but then they have three reinforcements. So that is very good. And look at that, it's just like, it's just limp. I love that, that's great. And again, Vortex generators. This is gonna be a high performance flying plane, but then look, we have an overlap issue here. See, mm -hmm. that is never gonna not buzz. I'll try to push it down, but it should pop free, I bet. Um, and then this tape goes all the way up and around, wow. very weird. I wonder if it's just so that it doesn't buzz, but then maybe it's supposed to be a reinforcement and just add a little strength to that because this thing otherwise could break free. And those always tend 
to be the first thing to break, okay? So again, not trying to beat anybody up. This plane looks like it's gonna be high quality. It looks like it's gonna be in the upper echelon of airplanes we've worked with in the past, but we are disappointed in every manufacturer that refuses to communicate with us or work with us. We're always annoyed by that because we reach out to them and we try our very best to put our best foot forward and develop relationships with these companies. But some of these companies just don't have the manpower to keep up with you know, influencers and things like that, I guess. I don't know, I hardly even consider myself one. But there's the other one, there's another little, oh. Did I see another? Yeah, I did. Look, right there. Oh, see, yep. there's another connection. So this must be like a night flyer or is just the tail a night flyer? Because I don't recall seeing that yeah. on, that's gotta be what the JST is. I bet that's what it is. Hmm. Well, we're gonna find out we'll in a few out. minutes either way. Oh, I stuffed that back in there, sorry folks. Oh, take the front, read the little thing in the corner. Does it say with internal oh, LEDs? Oh, look at that. There it is. It's night flying. So sweet. So yeah, so they have optional floats for this too. Now this one does not appear to have come with floats or does, does it come on the bottom? Uh, nope, nothing on the bottom. Okay. We'll so when we get into the fuse, we're gonna, it's going to tell the tale because I don't know if it comes with those night light controllers, but I'm kind of excited for that. And look, they've got the fancy little rudder on there. Oh yeah. I just watched a video where somebody had a water rudder and it was cool. And it makes me think, when we get our pond dug, if we do, problem is we have like $130,000 disparity in bids. Yeah. So we gotta figure out who's wrong and who's right. <laughs> and seriously guys, we're always making big investments in this channel and you guys probably don't realize it, but we've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this. So it's not like we just woke up one day and it was like, hey, let's spend a life savings on doing RC reviews. That happened over the course of nine years. Yes. That thing is so wow. light, it feels like a drinking straw. Holy, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think what the is? tape weighs as much. That is so crazy. It's a carbon fiber wing spar. Is it carbon That's fiber? So thin. It is, 100%. That is nuts. I really wish they wouldn't have taped on it though, yeah. because that is a really high quality. And yes. that scares me because it's so dang light. I mean, that thing's got to cost a fortune to make. So anyway, exciting. Anyway, so guys, we don't share that type of stuff as, you know, puff. We share that stuff because we want you guys to know we're serious about this. We're making significant investments in what we do and how we do it. And we don't want you guys to forget that when you're deciding where and how to spend your RC dollars. So if you want to help support us because we bring truth to the hobby and hold the manufacturer's feet to the fire, then you're in the right place. Okay, so this is a nice looking prop. Two bladed prop, 12.5 looks like, I mean, is it any better than any other prop we've seen? I don't know. Wood props are my favorite. I know. I know, but then when you hit the ground, they just Blech. I know, but they're wood. She does like wood. That is a very thin, straw-like, but you know what's funny? This <laughs> probably weighs more. as much as that. Let me see this. Holy crap, those are so light. This thing, this thing weighs about the same, I think. Amazing. So, guys, if you have questions, leave in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them. We have not been getting around very good on comments, admittedly. We've been so busy, which is a good thing to be. But there's obviously lulls in production and sometimes we have, I don't know what that's like, a programming cable, USB-A to USB-C. Yeah, USB-A to USB-C with a male-to-male -male connector and a piece of 3M double-sided stick'em. Okay. Okay, foam core double-sided sticky tape. Then what do we have here? We have a little wiring diagram and some other goodies. And Rob did warn me, he said, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more build than you're used to on this particular plane. And that's always fine. We just don't wanna do it always that way. Doesn't look bad though. No, it doesn't look terrible. There's a low piece count on the model itself, but I think what's going on is there's probably gonna be a little bit more setup on the radio setup. Mm. But that's what we do here on Brandfolds RC. So hopefully you guys have already figured that out. If you're looking forward to the radio setup on this plane, then that's really kind of what we offer that the other guys don't offer, generally speaking. There's a few guys that are doing detailed analysis of how to set up radios 
But here on Brian Phillips RC, it's like one of our mainstays and we do it consistently and we have been for literally hundreds of planes and any manufacturer that will work with us, you know, we'll show their stuff. We'll bring it to the audience and let them make the decision. Cause at the end of the day, we're not gonna sit here and pretend like this is the best, fastest, smallest, 3 dest whatever est. We try not to do that. In fact, we go out of our way to not do that. Because at the end of the day, you guys get to decide if it's the smallest, fastest, yellowest, whitest, blackest, whatever est. We just want you to see what it is. And that means we try not to do huge mods right off the bat. We used to kind of got our foot in the door doing mods, but now, we just like to show them stock and then let you guys make up your own minds on how you want to proceed. Female, micro, PH, 1S connectors, one, two, and mm -hmm. three of them. This is a digital, must be a 15 gram Metal Gear servo, wing connections with the 8S ports. So that's gonna give you all the servo connections and everything, just be careful with those. I never trust them until I have them fully functional. And if they don't work, then that might be a problem because I don't do any 8S planes yet. I, I know we will at some point, but right now we currently don't. So just keep that in mind if you have lots of spare parts. Now I must say, even though the pilot shape is very pretty and the pilot shape is kind of cool, I'm a little bit disappointed that the pilot is all foam. Like it's kind of like, mm, yeah, it's a little alien-ish. Yeah, but I actually really like the shape and everything. Uh, yeah. And I like that it's foam because that keeps the weight down. A lot of times those pilots are like a couple ounces. That's true. And it's like when you're trying to scrape and save weight, then you get something like this and then you put a heavy pilot in there. Yeah, you know, it's just really undermines your efforts. Yeah. So very cool. And then I might just add, look how small this motor is for the size of this aircraft. That is not a big motor, okay? Mm -hmm. So. Frankly speaking, they are trying to keep this thing light and agile, okay? So, let's pop this thing open. Okay, so it hinges from the back here. Uh, a couple of reinforcements, got a little delamination here from the chain glue. I'm just pushing that back down. I don't think it's gonna be a big problem. The pilot can easily be removed with some tape, it looks like. And then the pilot just drops down. So if you don't like the pilot, you can pop that out, put your FPV in there. And then it looks like you're gonna have a lot of this is not a super clear canopy, so you may end up having to cut a hole if you wanna do a pan and tilt camera setup and pretty flimsy, okay? So, so far on the quality grade, I would say the lowest quality thing we've seen so far is the canopy itself, regrettably, and you can tell by just the way it squeezes. Now, that being said, even on this expensive carbon ZT28, you've got a little bit of squeeze in the canopy. Let's show the people real quick because when we, critique, when we critique these aircrafts, we don't do it in a vacuum. That's way more sturdy. Now that is a bigger canopy, but it's a similar shape. Now this Viper, good strength, good pop back, better clear, better clear, a little bit thicker. And so you're gonna get a little higher weight with it. So all these things are considerations, not right or wrong. It's just, that's what it is, okay? or at least within the realm of what we understand, okay? All right, so inside we got lots of balsa wood. Oh man, lots of aluminum. Oh, that's a, is that a product? No, it's a, a Beatles ESC, programmable brushless ESC, 50 amp S-Bec, two through six S. And just looking, we got a bunch of these GST connections, which must go to the lights, okay? Then we have this weird thing here, which is the light controller. Okay, so that looks pretty straightforward and it plugs into the 6S balance lead. So yet again, and then there is a plug like this, which I assume is actually a signal controller to navigate the lights. And then of course we have a little Velcro strap here. These LED strips are just kind of like janked in there though. See, they're not stuck. To anything mm -hmm. so i mean it's probably not a big deal but they're pointed in now historically if you've ever seen the way these things glow if they're pointed out then you can see the individual leds so i, I kind of understand why they point them in but you you lose a lot of your brightness really if you do that okay so let's undo this velcro 
and see what we've really got going here. This is the, what is this thing called? The Porternids? I don't, I the, wish I, I don't it's know, not Predator. It's the Aurora AFCS. Poten, Potens? Potens? Aurora 8, okay, fine. USB micro, they got a bunch of plugs in there. I don't know what any of them do, so that's always exciting and not real promising for me because then I have to learn how to do it. Okay, and then right here we have a nice wooden bulkhead. It looks like it's double plywood thick and nut zerts. So you can give them a shot from here. Everything appears to be coated with a thick epoxy or some sort of a wood glue. It's hard to tell, but probably epoxy. It's clear, very well built, very stiff. Feels really good. I mean, but there again, it's also light. Okay, now of course I have the canopy off, but as I was suggesting, this is thin, not necessarily good, not necessarily bad, just what we see, okay? We call it the way we see it, doesn't mean it's right or wrong, you guys get to make up your own mind. Now, we have a small piece count, and part of that piece count is quite a few screws, a couple extra control arms, which are going to be used, they're not extras actually, and then we have some linkages, which are going to be for our elevator and router, because as you can see, they're not installed currently. Um, okay, so the build on this plane, I don't think is gonna be terrible, but we're gonna pause, get things cleaned up, and come right back. All right, so we're gonna put the landing gear on. As you can see, there is a pocket here for the uh, rear portion if you're gonna do floats. Now, the instructions are somewhat vague. I think it needs to go the other way. I wish it was just, a little bit more obvious. Yeah, that's forward, but it doesn't look square. Yeah, maybe it is. Eh, it's hard to tell. It looks like this one needs to be bent that way to be square. Because if I lay this flat, look. Maybe it is flat. Gosh, that's really hard to tell. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll just throw a caution in the wind then. Okay, so there's two bolt holes that we're supposed to go to, and then there's a third in the middle, but I don't even know what that does. Okay, so we're gonna assemble this just as per the instructions. The camera crew is gonna move so that I can reach the plane. I don't know what this is, something about the ESC. Then as usual, we can't quite fit everything because there's too many things here. All right, so we have to put a number, number two Phillips. Okay, so we got a number two Phillips. This should be close enough, four millimeters. And we just have to put those two screws in, but then I can't tell which ones we need. Locate the landing gear. The M3 by 10. And they're not labeled, none of the bags are, but they're separate. There should be six of them. Okay, well, no, there'll be six in this step. That doesn't mean that there's only six. See, there's a bunch here. That doesn't mean there's only six. There's one, two, three. Those are not all the same. Mm -mm. So then there's three here, so that rules that out. There's only two here. Why, why do we assume there's six of them? Because I'm just going by what's up here. Right, but I don't even see, where else are we gonna use those? On the main wing or holding the landing gear together? So we're gonna have to open the bags and figure out what's going on here. Okay, so we've got a bunch of little loose parts here. These are long, that can be ruled out. These can be ruled out, they're definitely not those ones. There's three, there's four. There's one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's four of each style of those. Those are gonna be what hold the motor to this bracket, I believe. But then I only see, I only see three of them. Oh, four, there we go. So yeah, that should hold the motor in there because they got the countersink to them. Okay, so that part I recognize. In fact, you know what, process of elimination. This is usually the easiest way to do this. Okay, so some motor mounts have an offset, so pay special attention. It doesn't seem like it, but on many, many, many of these motors that you get, uh, there will be one direction that's a certain uh, relationship and the other direction is the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some Loctite. This is just blue Loctite. I have a ton of this stuff. I get it when I'm working at work sometimes on projects and I just have like tons of it extra. So we're gonna pop this open and there is nothing special about this. You don't need to 
really worry too much about what we're using here. You can use whatever you want, just as long as it's blue Loctite. So kind of like what we consider to be removable. And these ones are Phillips, as you can see. So Phillips is fine and I have no problem with it. Where did that screwdriver go that I just had in my hand? What happened to it? Okay, so we have Phillips here. We're just gonna dip that into the thread lock right there. There's a little puddle of it. Make sure you don't just get solvent, guys. You actually wanna get a little bit of juice on there. Okay. We're gonna put that in our hand. And this is gonna be our motor mount. And as you can see, it's tried to pop off uh, my fingertips. So that's not uncommon stuff. And these are magnetic screwdrivers. So they're wanting to kind of fight me a little bit as I get this started. Once you have the first one going, it's not too bad. Okay, so we got that started. I'm actually gonna take a seat because it's a lot easier to film then for the camera crew. She knows where I'm gonna be more predictably. All right, so why do we not use Loctite on plastic, camera crew? Because it will eat the plastic. The it can, solvent, right? it can eat the can. solvent. The solvent can. The solvent is the carrier that allows this, what would be essentially like a dry paint to actually get carried down the threads, okay? If you go to the other side, I bet you'll be able to see it all. Right there. Okay, so we're gonna turn that. I'm trying to put a lot of pressure on there so I can get it torqued down without doing that. See how it's stripped out? That's not unrecoverable, but it's definitely pretty bad, okay? Not a big thing but it could be a big thing if you have to take this on and off a lot. That's a pretty good bite with this size. I wonder if it's just a little bit too big. Let's try a bigger one and see if it bites better. Definitely doesn't even go in. And then uh, what else do we have in here? Yeah, those are all just different various tips. The flat, flat, flat. That's huge, that's way too big. So this one's small, but then this one's even smaller. This one here is a three millimeter. Okay, so we'll try that. That might be a little bit better. I don't like stripping my screws like that because if you ever have an issue come up, you wanna be able to service the plane. So one of the only good things about putting this stuff together, in my opinion, is you know that you got the Loctite applied and you know you may have got a good purchase. Okay, so that didn't wanna strip the screw. So that's kinda of nice. So as you can see, this one worked a little better, the three millimeter versus the four millimeter. The four millimeter was just a little bit too big. So yes, I don't know what the heck that size class is. It's just whatever this Chinese brand did for sizing. Normally they would be sized in a number, number one, number zero, number 1.5, number two, that sort of thing, okay? So if you're getting like a Craftsman tool, it'll be sized that way. This one's definitely not Craftsman. Okay, so we've got that tightened on there. We've now eliminated four screws. Great, fun. Okay, so we can lay that off to the side on our paper towel so we don't get that stuff on our countertop. Okay, so now we have this weird flat screw to have no clue what that's for. We got four of these long screws and we're still looking for the mounts that are gonna actually mount the landing gear to the fuse. So there's six and then two. It's almost like these are too long, so they're definitely different, and then those are a different style altogether. These are a different style altogether. But then there's two more that are kind of of the same size class, but they're in a separate bag. So you see that? Mm -hmm. Look at that, how close they are. So I don't know what they're talking about where six comes into play, because I don't see six of anything. So guys, if you're used to this, when you build these planes, sometimes you just have to work through stuff. I'm gonna make the reasonable assumption that this is probably the size we want because they want 10 millimeters. Now, if you don't know what 10 millimeters are, you can measure and I'm probably gonna regrettably have to get my calipers to verify. All right, so waking up the calipers, make sure you're zeroed and then we'll go out to 10. Okay, so here's 10, roughly 10. Close enough for me. You can tell that that's um, 9.4, okay? So thread, thread to end, that is pretty much 10, 
okay? That's 10. 9.88, that's 10. There's four of them, huh, okay. So that makes that even harder decision. So they say that you need to have M315. That's what you're supposed to be using. M315, yep. So M315, so I was looking for 10s, they're actually 15s, okay? So my bad. So the 15s should be a lot easier to measure because they're the longest ones. Yeah, that one's 13.75, okay? So let's measure the head and all. Yeah, there's 15, but usually, my understanding is that that's the thread length, but I don't know, call me crazy, okay? So we got these two longest ones. Then there's a couple that are shorter, and then there's a couple that are, or excuse me, there's two sets that are longer. And then there's a couple regular, but we're gonna go with these. Okay, so they're Phillips. Again, Phillips is definitely, unless you're talking about Brian Phillips RC, is definitely not the right technique for these screws. I'd really like to see some sort of a hex drive. They just don't strip as easy. And they're telling us to use thread lock. Okay, all right, thread lock it is. So the other thing too is, and this is a pet peeve of all manufacturers, not just this brand, is if you're going to require that people use Loctite or China glue or CA, it would be really nice if you would just include whatever your type is, okay? Nice. If, you, if you like Loctite, then provide that, okay? Now, admittedly, that stuff is expensive and there are regulations that prevent them from shipping them to all territories in certain sizes. So I'm assuming that's why most of the manufacturers, by the way, this was the five millimeter size. So whatever, that'd be like a number two probably. Very good fit, very good fit. Okay, great, so that's tight, tight like a taiga. Now we have to take these landing gear pants. There's a Phillips and a Phillips. I don't even know if we need to take them out. So let's just go ahead and set this in here. Now, does this go there? Yes, it does. Or does it go there? No, it doesn't. It goes there, folks. So how does this work? Hmm, this sounds like it's gonna be a little bit confusing. Oh, we have to take it all apart? What a son of a gun. Okay, so we have to take it apart, mount one half onto the fixture. Okay, so we're gonna go with, this time, the five millimeter, again, Phillips. So let's undo the screw. Hmm, doesn't wanna fall out, so we'll just leave it. Undo this screw. Okay. Don't really understand why that's not coming apart, but it's not wanting to come apart. There it goes, okay. That looks really ugly in there. It's like it's, it's like it's dirty, but I don't understand. Okay, so then we have landing gear. I don't think it matters which one, but I'm not sure how all this goes. We do have to put a screw through. So locating the landing gear, wheel pant, place the inside half on the wheel pant against the outside of the landing gear leg and the wheel pant uh, retaining plate against the inside. Note the retaining plates are identical. Use a number two Phillips screwdriver and an M1310. Okay, M1310 were these guys, or were they? <laughs> They were these ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not according to the way we measured the other ones, because that's 9.61. So check this out. There's 11, so that's a 12. This is a 10. Even <laughs> 9.4, okay. So that increasingly difficult to guess when the lengths don't match what the instructions call out. So there's four screws and then two. Again, not a deal breaker, but just annoyances like this. We get this on all brands, but it is frustrating when you're trying to follow the instructions and you know you don't know what you need to know. So you just have to do the best you can. Okay, so this of course is the, it's got the two screws in it. They're gonna fall out at the least opportune time, or maybe they won't. They seem to be staying, so that's pretty cool. So I need to be able to run this screw through the top. I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Let's try it. Cause that's, that's clearly 
Is that where that goes? That's, that can't be what's supposed to happen. They, they gotta be using like a sheet metal screw on there. There's no way we're putting those on. There's no way. That's gotta be a Phillips screw. It's gotta be one of these, like that. Cause that's the only style. Now what size do they want? M3 by 10. M3 by 10. Yeah, but that doesn't tell me anything because this is what I'm trying to decide if it's, if it's this style or if it's that style. M3 by 10 tells me nothing. This, you would think it, M3 tells me it's a machine, I thought, but this is not, the, you don't put a machine screw into that. You put a, if you're biting into the plastic, you would use this type. It'd be like a self tapper. And that's what would ordinarily be used. And that bites into the plastic, you see. Mm -hmm. But then there's nothing past it, right? There's no nut insert. There's no nut assembly. It's just a screw. So what I'm trying to see is, unless, no, that wouldn't be it either. And then there's three screws here. There's only two pants. Oh, this is so confusing. Why don't they make this stuff more clear, guys? I got to say, I mean, we'll figure it out. It's not the end of the world. It's just really annoying and we've done it so many times it's like it never gets less frustrating when you've done it a hundred times and it's the same thing hmm yeah and then there's no close-up shot you can't tell what the screw is it looks to me like in that image that image looks can you come around here and show them a shot of what i'm pointing out there you see this it looks like it's got a sharp edge but i can't quite tell right is that sharp or is that a machine end i can't tell it's like the picture is useless to me it does look like it might be rounded over and he is definitely going through <sighs> he's going through this side like that that's still that also into that little retainer this thing right yeah but but that's what i'm trying to say is like this doesn't this shaft size is thick enough that it's going to be biting on the way in which again is somewhat unusual. I just lost one, one just fell out, okay? So that fell out. This one's gonna fall out at the least opportune time, I'm sure. But you see what I'm saying? That's like very unusual right there too. So if I put that in to where it's tight, is that going to allow enough room for the shaft clearances? I don't know. But that's definitely enough to reach through here. And all of a sudden we are concerned with how much penetration we're gonna have on that. You see? So this does actually matter, but we're also be, gonna be going through the aluminum. So let's just try this, actually. Let's try this and see if it works. So guys, on Brian Phillips RC, we try to figure these things out. The uh, mysteries of the universe, also known as reading Chinese manuals that are generally pretty useless and sometimes downright garbage. This one is not amazing or terrible at this point. It's pretty much average, which sounds bad, I know, but truth is it's not any worse than what we've seen from most manufacturers that have this type of piece count. Okay, so I'm gonna back the screw off and I'm just gonna see if I can bring this in tight. It's got a little bit of a lip to it. I just do not wanna go out and get penetration all the way through to the outside but if you look closely with me, we've got a lip here. So again, we don't have a super tight clearance. You wanna give them a shot from this side, you'll be able to explain what I'm talking about there. Okay. And then this is the one that fell. So I'm actually going to quickly slide that in. Now we may pause for the other one when we get to that point, uh, but we're not to the point. Obviously it's gonna be a lot easier to figure out once we've established what we believe to be the correct method. And in fact, we're gonna pause. I gotta fix something real quick. All right, so my stand was protruding through on one side unevenly from the other. So it was kind of like getting in the way, preventing me from getting my body up here. Okay, so now we're gonna undo this one nut. And this looks like a standoff. So the standoff will pass through. Now, admittedly, wheel pants, if they're not built right, they work terrible. And just leave them off if there's ever any doubt that would be the best approach, okay? Every single time I'm gonna tell you the same thing. Now, see how that doesn't fit? That has to be put on 
after the fact. Okay, that's weird. All right, so now nut driver. Let's see if we can get this right the first time. We did, it's a miracle, seven millimeters. Okay, so that definitely goes in there. And you're supposed to have to hold that with a pair of, um, you know, needle nose pliers. In our case, we didn't need them. Okay, so then this spins, I guess. You definitely don't want that fuel, that's fuel hose. Okay, so it slows down the wheels. It's gonna act as a bit of a brake, I guess. I'm seeing if I tighten that, does it? No, it's just right, okay. So that positions the wheel farther over. Give them a shot down here so they can see that there is clearance in fact. Okay. Do you see the clearance on that? Now hold it right there. See, we're good. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna put this back on, which is the other side of the wheel pant. Again, this is just like one of those processes that you do when you're building these Chinese built planes. And it's, it's not like a huge deal, it's just annoying. Once you get it down, it's not a big deal. And the thing is, you're gonna be like, oh, it wasn't that hard. Well, yeah, it wasn't that hard, but there's like ambiguity for no reason. Just print a manual that shows what to use, simple. And I'm gonna say the same thing to Horizon, E-Flight, uh, Hangar 9, FMS. FMS. I don't care who's making the plane. If the manual sucks, we point it out. Usually we just ignore it. Yeah. But in this case, since it's a new plane, we're gonna point out the fact that it kinda did suck on that. And we've got three little sacks. We could put some goods in there. And uh, if we ever needed to sell them, you know, to kinda make ends meet, we can do that. So, now the other side, we'll pause and come back. All right, so we are gonna go and skip from like where we would be on page seven. We're gonna skip ahead to page 19 and we're gonna actually mount the motor because like I want it out of the way and I want it done, okay? I don't really care about having the wings and everything in the way while I'm trying to mount the motor. So I'm gonna to tend to do that stuff as early as possible just to make my life easier. And I do see where the leads are for the ESC. They're back here. And so you can't mount this in another direction. It's always gonna have the wires coming out the same spot, okay? So that's the way that's gonna go. But the thing is, I'm not sure how exactly to get those wires forward from the ESC. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pop the canopy. So it release, the release is up here. Let's lay that off to the side. And then you can see how this ESC is allowed to you know, be positioned, we'll be able to plug those wires in no problem up here, okay? So for the moment, I'm just gonna get, this thing is slick, slick, slick. It has so much mold release left on it. It reminds me, the last plane we did that I had problems with, guess what plane that was? The twin timber. Twin timber. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we also have to mount this onto the motor. So there's no sense in doing that once it's on the plane. We'll do it now while it's easy and we can get to everything quicker and without so much effort, okay? So we're gonna move things around for the fourth time. And we've already mounted this thing. We did that earlier. Now we're gonna mount this thing next. Pretty obvious where that goes. And uh, I'm just gonna pop off this nut and the washer thing, which is gonna go over by the spinner, okay? Now this is another one of those steps where you're gonna need to you know, go through and reverse engineer the entire uh, airplane to figure out that these are the four screws that you need. It's pretty obvious these are the screws you need. And the way it's so obvious is because of the way that they'll fit down in there. And then you can see the purchase that you'll receive from the screws. Okay, so now the next thing is, let's figure out what size these are, probably this size. Yep, it is that size and that's, as you can see, two millimeters. So I've dropped that through the adapter and I'm gonna get in here and just give it a pretty healthy dose of Loctite. And then we're gonna go ahead and get that not even tight. We're gonna do all four the exact same way. Oh, and then I don't know if we mentioned, whoops, I just dropped that. Did it's, you see where it went? Yep, it's right in front. Okay, there. thank you. Mm -hmm. We got the other wheel on oh, off camera, if I didn't already mention that, folks. I mentioned that we were gonna pause the video. Geez, that's a lot. I probably didn't need that much, but 
In fact, I'm going to grab another screw. And I don't really care about being wasteful on something like that. I just don't want like tons of extra weight for asymmetry because this is, of course, on the bell housing of the motor. And so any vibration that we create by imbalance would be um, basically not a good thing. Okay. So again, that's a pretty minuscule amount of weight. So I'm not sitting here trying to split hairs too much. Okay, now they're not torqued down, just to be clear, I know that they're not torqued down and that's what you wanna do is just be careful to know what's happening. So if you like this type of long format content where we actually show step-by-step -step process of building planes and getting them up in the air from out of the box, then you'll love our entire channel. And we have literally thousands of videos that we do this exact very thing. No matter how frustrating the build is or how easy the build is, we try to show the entire process. We might pause if there's repetitive things but generally speaking we show the whole build okay really nice machine component there looks pretty okay and so this is a 20 3d brushless outrunner fp zm uh, 10 20 30 a 30 amp uh, 600 kb okay so we're going to take this and we're going to hold it up against here we know that the wires need to go that way so i believe this will be the best angle now they don't talk anything about uh, setting a down and right angle that I can see anywhere. So they must want it to be flat, which is very unusual. Hmm. I wonder if they do want us to do that. I don't see any washers in here. I don't see anything. We're gonna pause. Okay, so the camera crew noticed this as I was looking in the manual. It's already got the down angle and the correction angle if you show from this side. So it is actually already going to be pointing the motor in the right direction, okay? Which is not straight, by the way. If it was straight, the plane would want to veer off to the left and flip over and do some crazy stuff. All right, so now we just need to figure out which screws are supposed to actually hold the motor on. And I can tell you right now that these are going into a nut zert here, 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 and here. This is balsa and nut zert, so we should be safe to use thread lock again. Now, if you look at these screws, we have a few that are all the same length, and then we have a couple that aren't. So I'm pretty confident those are the ones we're gonna need. Gosh, where are the screws for the wings? I assume these are the screws for the wings. There's a couple thumb screws. Oh yeah, you're right, good point. Okay, so those, and then that singular weird one okay. must be for the, nope. There's already one for the spinner right here, okay? So these have got to be it. Now, why do I say they've got to be it? Because I don't know where else you would get four screws mm -hmm. to do this with. And these are all affiliated with the control linkages, okay? And the bowl, the uh, bowl link ends, okay? So I'm gonna go with four millimeters or I'm gonna go with three millimeters. Eh, it looks like probably, let's try the biggest one. You could do actually you could do five and it'll work. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and just get a little bit of this Loctite right on the tip. Now, if you ever need Loctite and you wanna put it next to your plastic or your, um, your, your spinner or whatever, then very much use caution. You can let this stuff dry entirely and then put it in, but I would not recommend it. In applications where you can't get in there, it's generally not a big factor, so just don't use it. You don't need it everywhere. If you need something, okay, then what you can do is you can use, go ahead and hold that, put a hand on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can use CA on the threads just a little bit. Okay, this one I'm gonna have to get past the wires, so this might be a little bit awkward. There we go. Keep holding that down, please. Mm -hmm. All right, so, oh yeah, that's the right size. So process of elimination wins the day again. Okay, not tight, just tightened. We are gonna torque them at the end when all four are in place. So just like building other things, it's not a super hard build. There's just kind of a, a few frustrating moments when you're trying to identify which screw is the screw that they meant, and they aren't always so dang clear. But if only that was only this build. 
that would make our lives a lot easier. Well, the nice thing is once it's built, it's yep. built. You don't have to worry you know, about it. So, Well, unless you take it apart. But if you take it apart, there should be a couple thumb nuts for the wings. And disappointingly enough, we have to glue the tail together next after we get this done. And why would the tail be the next move, camera crew? Well, the wings are always best last because they're always in the way. Yeah, they're long. They just make it harder to flip the plane over and a variety of other factors. Okay, so as you can see, liberal amount of thread lock. So for those of you at home that have never built an RC airplane and you're screaming, oh, that looks really easy. You know, it's not that hard. You should try it. Mm -hmm. If you wanna follow the links in the video description below, you'll help support us financially and help give us a little pat on the back for having taken on this project in a way that would help you along. And that's one of the things that Megan and I have done for years is to try to help guide people that are brand new to the hobby or just returning to the hobby through these builds. They're not especially difficult, but sometimes we'll run into frustrating parts like, you know, hey, what screw do you actually use? And do the wheel pants actually go that way? And so on and so forth. And uh, the other big thing that we do on these unbox build radio setup videos is we show where the manufacturers cheaped out on materials. And uh, in this case, I don't feel like they've really cheaped out anything except for maybe the canopy. Okay, so let's see how this goes. You know, I'm a little bit concerned about mounting this right now. And also this block does not feel like it's gonna fit very well. Did you see what I was seeing there? Yeah, I did. Hold that again, please. See how it's, there it goes. Oh. I'm just trying to decide, do I want to try to put, do I want to try to put this, hmm, because normally there would be some sort of a backer, but there really isn't on this one. You just go straight with this. Oh, wow. You go straight. Now, now some of you are probably thinking, yeah, but you shouldn't put that on yet, Brian. Yeah, I know. You, you really shouldn't, honestly, shouldn't. So uh, the safest thing to do is to not actually install this right now, but you actually can do it right now. You just have to be careful. And so what we're gonna do is actually, since this is kind of a new model for us, we're gonna be good boys and girls. And we're gonna go up here where there's not actually gonna leave a bite mark on our shaft. And we're gonna just unscrew this. But it does look like we should be able to screw that on, which is what I was trying to establish. Okay. I wasn't actually trying to put that on yet. We'll put that on at the end for once. We generally don't wait till the end to put the prop on just because we don't think it's really always necessary. Some of you will highly disagree and that's fine because you've been to the hospital, you've cut yourself and we don't mean to bring light to anybody's injuries. But the truth is, if you do this long enough, you'll eventually get cut, you'll have an accident, okay? I understand that that is a reality I face, okay? but also we're quite careful people. And yes, I have still been cut, but I was cut when I was being uncareful. Okay, just gonna pass this back there. I did put Loctite on it. Although the Loctite is probably not necessary, I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh yeah, that's in there. Now, why would I Loctite here? Just because everything else is getting Loctite, I don't want these to feel left out. <laughs> And also that helps to eliminate some screws from our docket of screws. And then when we're going through trying to figure out what to use for something critical on the tail, we won't have to wonder what is necessary. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And actually in the grand scheme of things, that build has, has gone pretty smooth. It's just figuring out the screws so far. Everything mm -hmm. is lined up nicely. We haven't had any big issues there, which is actually where we, we do run into quite a few issues is fitment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're also gonna wanna take note that that did not fit on there very good. Okay, now the reason it didn't fit on there very good is because it's a real wood prop and this taper gets a little bit thicker as you go back and so I usually try to screw them on and that gives me a better purchase. You don't have to do that. You can actually try to ream out the hole but we've we found that it's just really like just do the easy thing. It's usually the better way uh, because most of the manufacturers assume you're going to do it anyway. So now speaking of easy things, that's not the way that the manufacturer suggests. The next step we're going to be doing is putting on the tail. Now, the tail is an important part. It's very critical for structural stability. It is a component that you don't want to come free. 
but I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about glues. First, I'm gonna wash my hands. I've been working with Loctite and Loctite solvent is sometimes quite slick. And then you pair that up with slick mold release from these airplanes and you will drop planes, I promise you, if you're not careful. So the cleaner you can keep your hands as you work, the less likely you're gonna drop your planes. I've almost dropped this like three times. So it's very slick. All right, now our tail section was already pre-assembled in that the, re not the retract, but the tail wheel assembly was already installed. Now, I don't know why it seemed to appear that we would need to do that, but for whatever, for whatever reason, we didn't have to. Now, just so you guys know, we're gonna be going back to page eight for this. It looks like page seven kind of outlines putting that together. Find a vertical stabilizer assembly if you have the night vision or night version, which I do. Plug in the LED JST connector into the fuse, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. That's pretty easy stuff. Now, we don't have JST connections. We have micro pH 1S connections, okay? Mm -hmm. But we do need to plug those in as we go or it's going to lead to an pretty much inability to do it later. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on. I actually have to rotate the plane stand now. By the way, if you guys are wondering, this is just a Robart plane stand. There's absolutely nothing special about it other than one of our longtime supporters named Tom sent it to us, which was nice, and we always appreciate that. And you can see that it's slick, 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 slick. And in fact, it's so dang slick that I'm gonna wipe the bottom and see if I can get it to stay. This is just a regular kitchen rag, but it just does not wanna slide. So I guess I'm lucky I already mounted the motor because I'm gonna use that to hold it so we can assemble this tail. Now, why do we need to hold it up? Because we have to put this tail on here and we have to use glue to do it. And my strip just came out. Ooh, boy, that was weird. It's exciting. The backing is not even pulled, okay? So I don't know if they meant to do it that way or if it would make better sense to go ahead and peel this backing. Mm. What do you think, camera crew? Is it gonna be super sticky if you, if you stick it up there? Is it so much to get like bunched up? I, un I understand what you're saying. That would be bad. I'm just gonna slide it in there and just let the sticky stuff do its job. Oh yeah, it's okay. there. I have no idea if it's the right direction. It's probably gonna glow one side versus the other, so I wanna try to turn it sideways like this so that it kind of points back. backward. Mm -hmm. I think back is where we want it to go so that it illuminates the, the majority of the frame, the airframe. Oh, for God's sake, this is awkward. I wonder why the assembly worker didn't put it on in China. China. China's cheating all the time, I know they are. They cheated on this. Okay, so I'm gonna get that in there and it is not the direction I want, but it's the direction enough for me to get in there and push the first little bit down with a long screwdriver. And that's what I wanna do, okay? So you see what I'm doing, guys? I'm just going down here and I'm just trying to get that to fall off of the side, which who knows if that's gonna work. Mine's probably gonna glow one side versus the other. Whatever, I don't really care. It's not that much. Not that big of a deal. Okay, so there's a red and a black, and there is a key that tells you the alignment. And I'm just gonna have the camera crew hold that with one hand while I plug this singular wire in with the other hand and see if it goes, which it did. Cool, awesome. Okay. Now, because we have basically to put this down here, I wanted to see how that was gonna go. I cannot see the wire going up front, so I'm gonna try to drop it in there and see if it works, which it does. Okay, so that's the way that's gonna go. My connection is gonna be pretty much impossible to test, but that's just the way it is. So the camera crew is going to, you know, I, I almost feel like Maybe this would be better pushed higher up in there. I'm just gonna pull it down from the side. If it'll go. If it doesn't go, then no big deal. Okay, it came out. See, I'm just gonna push it way up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably the better option, folks. I mean, I did pull the backing off because I feel like the backing is gonna create a dark spot. Now I need to glue this. So I'm gonna hold this here with the camera crew's hand, meaning she's going to do it. Let's talk China glue. China. 
the land of lies and deception right here. We're gonna use China glue from FMS. You can use foam to foam, they're both very good. This stuff is slightly cheaper, uh, but it just depends on where you're buying from. You know what? If you're buying a receiver, you might buy this. And since we're gonna use the Spectrum receiver, we'll use this. We're not trying to talk you out of the FMS China glue. It's actually very good. Mm -hmm. We've had no problems with it. This one just happens to have the safety warning so you know you'll die from using it. Hold on. Okay. Yes. At no. least this label admits it. Yes. Okay. So the Chinese labels are kind of like, you probably won't die. It's assumed because it's, we didn't print it. Because it's just magic. No, that's Hobby King's version. <laughs> the FMS version just doesn't talk doesn't, about it yeah, at all. Just, just it just is what it is. Well, okay, so yeah, this is not two-part epoxy. You might be thinking, oh no, Brian, they said to use epoxy, your, your plane's gonna fall apart, everybody's gonna die. Yep. Hasn't happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. And if it's good enough to hold the two halves of the fuselage together and everything else that holds this plane together, then it's good enough to do this. Mm -hmm. That being said, you may disagree and you can use two-part epoxy all you want. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, I'm just trying to tell you what I'm doing. And also, we want you to hear that loud and clear, guys. If you see something we do that you feel is maybe a little bit unsafe, a little bit uncouth, then just do it your way. But the truth is, we have done it our way so many hundreds of times that we have come to learn that it, it generally works pretty good. We have pretty good outcomes from most of our planes. We do crash occasionally. We do have mistakes. We do have manufacturing flaws that we run into. We try not to make a thing of it because it does happen. All the manufacturers have problems, every single one of them, including this one. So we try not to bust their balls too bad, but we're also not gonna sit there and just pretend like it didn't happen, because that's stupid, no matter how much they want us to. That's part of the reason why we have traction, I think, with our crowd that follows us here on YouTube. It's not because they come to see us cover for these manufacturers. What good is that? What good would we have if we're just gonna cover for all of their shortcomings? We want you to understand what you're getting into, and sometimes that means, hey, a little bit extra work here, a little extra work there. You gotta figure out which screws to use here. You gotta figure out what threads up. You gotta get these things lined up. You don't expect to, that sort of stuff. It's not like a deal breaker for me. Shoot, if you want a plane to be super easy to build, you just wouldn't build one. Okay, so we're gonna make this go. I'd like to release this again. And while this is cooking off, I'm gonna try to release that and just get that. You see what I'm doing, guys? I'm just trying desperately to get it to go that way. It just does not want to go. You kind of got to favor it at an angle, yeah. which sucks because that means it's going to always be at an angle. You know, the other thing I could do while we're just chilling and letting this cook off. Yep. Why don't we see if we can try, let's try using a toothpick. Do you think that would work? Or is it just not long enough? To stick it up in there? What about a skewer? Sticking it up in there gave me an idea. Oh. I wonder if I could put it on the tip of my screwdriver like is, this. Is the back of that hole wide enough for that thing to sit in or is that why it's wanting to come off or no. go at an angle? Yeah, the answer to your question is no. Okay. But look, here, watch. I'm gonna just stick it up in there. Watch this. Once I get it up in there, see that gives me control. Oh. Then I can spin the screwdriver and whatever. It still did the same dang thing. Okay, it is what it is. That was a good thought. Yeah, yeah but totally ineffectual. Okay, so now for those of you at home saying, no, it's not epoxy, it's never gonna hold, just mark your words, put it down. If my tail comes off, then I will You'll eat my it. words. And I will admit immediately that I use glue instead of epoxy. Now, some of you guys might wanna tape this. You might wanna do some different supplemental piercing, which I'm gonna show you one method that we have used in the past if you're ever in any doubt, okay? So like if you really do want to reinforce these joints, a very easy way to do it. I'm not doing this on this plane. Maybe I will. Are you? Am I? Mm. I am. Okay. I just want that to stay down. And see, the problem is it's really hard to keep this stuff down. And so what I'll do is I'll push this down until it's solid and there's already a screw down there. But if you were in any doubt, you could push this down by rotating it at an angle and you can pin it like this, but you wanna pin it so that it resists that uncoupling effect. In our case, all I have to do is put a screw in here. So let's see which screw it is. I'm sure it'll be super not clear. That one. So it's an M310. 
One, three, ten. Okay, so that's pretty sure it's not that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, then this bag. Hey, camera crew, some more bags for things if we needed to oh, put like super really small uh, doses into yeah, small bags. I need those. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So number two. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's pretty good. Okay. okay. So we're gonna go to five millimeter. And then this just goes right up here, up the bottom. Ooh. Yeah, I know. That's what I said too. Then we're just gonna stick that in the hole and then just turn it and we're gonna brace the rudder. So we can turn that. And once we get it tight, we'll back it off like an eighth of a turn, really tight, and then back it off just an eighth of a turn. And there it is. So as you can see now, shine the camera through this crack so they can see there's a gap. Yes, I see you. You see the gap? Mm -hmm. That gap is not a good gap. Bad gap, bad gap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, okay? And I am going to push down here and I'm just looking where I can do this from. Yep, that's where I can do it from. I'm just gonna go right here at an angle, okay? And you're like, you cannot actually be serious about doing that. I just did it, guys. I did it, it's gone, relax, it's okay. Nobody's gonna die, okay, that I know of, okay? Now, I'm gonna push this down. I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna go this way, okay? All right, now we have two different angles that's gonna hold that, and you will never, ever, ever know that it's in there, except that I just literally filmed it and published it on YouTube for a bunch of aviation RC enthusiasts to watch. So yes, you're gonna know. Fine. Okay, very good, so that's there. Now, our next move is the horizontal stabilizer, and we have a wing joiner, which I liked to forget. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick in that into the hole in. Oh yeah, good fit, beautiful. All right, and then one other thing we have to do here is get these wires landed. Again, we've got the micro PH 1S connectors. How do you know which one goes up, which one goes down? Good question. There is a linkage or a control horn that's here, okay? And it looks like we're gonna be passing screws through. Let's see what the instruction manual suggests. So what we have to do is we have to go forward a couple of pages to get back caught up. Uh, looks pretty straightforward. Oh, screws comes from the bottom, that's good. Okay, so yeah, so we'll be putting the control linkages on later and there'll be just a singular screw here and I'm pretty sure I was just touching the screw. It's the ones we just used on the tail. That's all we have left. Okay, very good. So what I need to do is I need to actually pull this out so I can access the plug. Okay, so it's out. Same thing here, I have to pull this one out. And you'll note I only used one. Ooh, this is gonna be awkward, oh geez. Do you want me to? Yeah, hold that. Hold under. And hold that, and then I might need to get, I might need to get my forceps. Okay. If this doesn't work. Needle nose pliers are a little bit more generic, so I, I like to use them if I can, for the sake of the people watching at home. I'm gonna get forceps. And forceps, guys, are gonna give you a better reach. It's gonna make it a little bit more convenient for these steps. But the thing is, if you don't have forceps, you can probably get the job done with needle nose. It's just a lot harder to film. Yeah. Okay, so with that, I'll go ahead and use my straight end here and just get one tooth in. And I'm gonna be prepared. And I've got red is up on both. So they're plugged together, very tight like a taiga. Got it. Now, on the other side, we'll have to slide it onto the rod first. This time we slid the rod on. Now, do we have to glue this? Nope, this one's screwed. Just the screw. Okay. And then you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take, hmm, let's take a flat screwdriver. Let's see if we can walk this down and into the tail section to get that out of the way. Hmm, yeah, that should work. I want the connector down there and inside, but you definitely don't wanna to have to undo that then because it'll make it very challenging to access that later. So if you plan to take this apart for transport, yeah, you're gonna hate these. I mean, granted, you wouldn't have to always plug those in if you knew you were gonna be doing daytime flying, 
Okay, so you got those two wires. Now we're just gonna kind of walk these back, preferably try to get those go that. into the pockets. Okay, great. So that's in. Now I'm gonna take this and push it through. It's all the way through. Okay. All right, so we should be good to go. But before we continue, why don't we get that screw tight? Let's just grab the landing gear and pivot the plane. Once you're upside down, this thing actually stays put on the plane stand just fine. Okay, so we have one screw here. Should be pretty easy to get that one tightened in. Guys, if you're new to the channel, this is Brian Phillips RC. I'm Brian Phillips. Camera crew is Megan, my wife. Hopefully you guys have come to know us from watching some of our 1700 plus videos that we have out on our YouTube channel. And if you're just new to the YouTube channel, new subscriber, new visitor, we appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, click the subscribe button and choose to click the bell and choose all. And then you'll get notified of all the new content that we're putting up. And there is a lot of it. We try to review at least a new plane or so a week. And then we usually try to get a second thoughts or a helicopter or something like that that's kind of um, in the same arena, but mostly fixed wing is what we do. So if you're new to the hobby and you're looking for somebody that's willing to help you get from what you did know years ago to where we are now, you're in the right place. Now, make no mistake, you may need to go back and watch some of the old content to get a little bit more of that. There's nothing to be ashamed of there at all. And we're here to help you as you get up to speed. And we wanna help you guys make good decisions. It's very windy in here today. <laughs> And we're here to help you guys learn some of the lingo and the technology that goes into making these planes fly so dang good. Okay, so red is toward the tail of the plane. And I need to, this is gonna be awkward. Do you need a hand? No, I don't know yet, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it without a second set of hands. We might need it, not sure yet. The forceps are definitely gonna make this easier, but it's still gonna be a pain. Pain in the newts. Okay, so we're just gonna hold it right there and just slide that in. Hmm, awkward. So guys, if you like RC and you're not subscribed to Brian Phillips RC, we would definitely encourage you to do that. Anytime that you guys subscribe, you'll be helping to support our channel. It doesn't cost you any money and we don't even have membership turned on but maybe someday we will. At this point, we just want you to buy the stuff that we review when you find one that you like. And yes, you can buy this particular plane, even though we've reached out to and never heard back from Flex Innovations for a variety of reasons. I'm sure they're probably a little bit understaffed to be dealing with influencers like us, but we would love to see them succeed and keep pressure on the big boys. Not that that's necessarily our primary reasoning here, our primary reasoning in what we do on this channel is to help grow the hobby, help people prevent becoming a statistic, being a statistic, being a one and done. A one and done meaning they fly a plane, they get one that's way too advanced, they crash it, they have a terrible experience, and then they never come back to the hobby and we've then lost you for life. When really, it shouldn't be like that. You should buy one plane, be hooked, and then be with us for the rest of your natural life. So that's what we do. We try to do that at least. And the way we do that is by helping you to learn how to use your equipment the best that you can. And it's obviously gonna always be on a learning curve and it is a steep learning curve. Make no mistake, it's hard to fly. And as you learn to fly, we're gonna help you do it as best as you can. So thanks for being here with us. We're gonna continue this build. Obviously we have the tail horizontal stabilizers installed. The uh, elevator is ready to receive the control linkages and stuff. And same thing with the rudder. But I think we're going to wait until the radio is set up for that process, correct? Yep. All right, so our last and final step before this plane is basically in one big piece is to put on the wings. So let's, let's figure out how we're going to do that. In order to figure out how we're going to do that, I'm probably going to have to, first of all, flip this thing around so it's not reaching out into the spot where I'm standing. Second thing I need to do is I need to look and just study how this wing is gonna slide on here. There is a connector here. There's obviously a large wing joiner. That thing we can put in right now. 
It's going to go through the center so you can see it in the middle of the plane. And you yeah, see how I have to, wire. nope. Yeah, I was just going to say, I can see the wire from above. Okay, so now that's through. Thing weighs like nothing. It's very incredibly strong and very light. And it's weird because this wing is set up and it looks like a high wing plane by the way that this wing is designed in my opinion. But it's a low wing plane. So it's a little bit different configuration than what we've seen. So that's kind of cool. Now this is going to pass in, this GST connector is gonna be for the lights, for the night lights. And then the rest of it is gonna be one big connector that's gonna go right here. And this is, I'm gonna need your help where you were. Oh, sorry. Hold down right here, please. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna slide this into the fuse. And once it goes into the fuse, can we see it at some point? Yes, we can, okay. So now I need to figure out a way to get that wire passed under and out. Hmm. Again, we're gonna go back to forceps, forceps with a bent tip. We're gonna grab the connector. We're gonna try to pull it through, which was super easy actually. And then it looks like we're already kind of in the right orientation from what I can tell. It's a little bit challenging to tell, but yes, that's, that looks right. So once I get this squared away, the camera crew is just kind of holding the planes. Hopefully the focus isn't giving her trouble. If you didn't realize this, the camera crew is my wife of many years. We film together. She uh, enjoys filming with me, but she is not a hobby fan like I am. I am obsessed. She tolerates it. So <laughs> in case you guys didn't know that, that's the way it is in our family. Some of you have similar circumstances or you have a spouse that really loves it with you. And uh, what's really cool is Megan helped me a lot. Okay, so that's in there. And she's invested in my success here. And so it's really cool that we can share that together, but it's also unusual and we get it. So we're just very thankful that Megan is here to help facilitate. Okay, so you can like, oh, I'll flip this over. Okay. So now <clears throat> what I need to do is I need to set this back down. Camera crew is just gonna support this quick. I'm looking for where there's a screw that holds that in and I don't see it yet. Oh, it's inside, isn't it? Yep, thumb nut. Where? Okay, hold right here. Okay. So now inside of this bag, there's two thumb nuts, okay? Meaning you don't need a screwdriver to function or to tighten them. And that's nice if you have to disconnect your wings. However, I must say, this is a pretty small plane. Um, it's not gonna be a super hard one to transport in my opinion. And I'm probably gonna use a screwdriver still because that is a tight spot to get to. Oh, that's where. Mm -hmm. That is a little awkward. Very, but it's okay, no big deal, we'll get it done. So folks, we love doing this stuff like I was saying, uh, but really my wife is just a very selfless person and she helps me to film because she cares about me. And if you're a spouse and you're the one that doesn't like the hobby, if you really wanna do something nice for your loved one, you would let them do this more. Because it is, <laughs> it is kind of a lifestyle. And yes, it's probably annoying for you that they love playing with toys, but you know what? It is a lot better than having There's a bad drinking things. habit or drugs. Maybe. Maybe. Or, well, depends. Depends on how far you take it. But yes, there are definitely worse things in life that you could do. At least this is a relatively wholesome experience. And uh, it's definitely a positive thing. And so that's why we like sharing this so much because it's a great way to bring people together in a very positive way doing RC aviation. And of course, it's not maybe the cheapest hobby in the world. It's certainly not the most expensive. We know from experience and you probably do too. If you've ever been in real full scale aviation, you'll think this is free. It's like, it's like a rounding error on one flight. So for those of you that are in full scale aviation, you think, oh, I know how to do that. I flew a plane that one time, or I've been the, I have uh, IFR clearance, you know, I, I have retract endorsement. You know, I've done my three check rides this year. Um, okay, well, that doesn't mean you know how to fly radio controlled airplanes. And believe me, you will think that until you try it or, you know, you, I mean, some people do, but most do. If you're a pilot, you, different you, you, you probably do, different skills. But the thing is, there are a lot of pilots that do fly radio controlled airplanes. And then that brings them to a point where they're like, hey, I'm very interested in this and I'm going to fly full scale at some point. And for me, uh, I would love to fly full scale at some point, but we're just not there. We don't have the resources to do that. Mostly time, but also buddy, it's kind of a rich man sport and we love doing this. And so it definitely keeps my whistle wet to say the least. 
and I'm doing PPG right now, which is pretty cool. I'm trying to get better at that so I don't kill myself doing it. And in the meantime, we're doing this too. So if you guys are new to the hobby and you're thinking, I really have ambitions of flying full scale aircraft for general aviation, or maybe you want to have a career of it, this is the place to be guys. It's going to help you learn all sorts of things about flight that will help you be a better pilot. But make no mistake, they're not the same skill. Also, we have three wires we need to land on the motor, but since we don't know what direction it's gonna go yet, hmm, just trying to think. It'd probably be better to just go ahead and plug them in now, even though we're gonna have to redo it. Just do it color for color to start. Yeah, color for color is like, I mean, I feel like 99% of the time it doesn't work that way, <laughs> but you, you can actually program it either way. So you could go color for color, but I doubt it. It almost never works that way. So all I'm going to do is just basically reach these wires. And since the camera crew suggested it, we'll do it her way. And just to be clear, this ESC does not feel like it's going to reach as it sits. It doesn't. Look how short this wire is. That is ludicrously short. Why is it so short? How did you even find an ESC with such a short wire on it? I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to get your hands in there. You won't. Ooh. You're gonna do it like this. You're gonna do it like this, guys. That's all you're gonna do. Because if you think you're gonna do it any other way, you're not gonna be able to reach. Okay, so this is black. So now just to be clear, the battery eliminator circuit, the BEC is included in this ESC, electronic speed control. Electronic speed controllers are kind of like an AC, um, kind of like an AC motor drive circuit, like a variable frequency drive within a DC circuit, okay? So what you're doing is you're changing on and off the controls from one set of magnets in a magnetic field on a brushless motor up front, and then you're shutting that off and you're moving to the next coil, and then you're moving to the next set of coils and the next set of coils, but it's actually pairs of coils. And let's just say that there's like three sets, so like one, two, three, and then you've got like one, two, three, and you've got one, two, three, and they just alternate, and it spins the bell housing around the stator, and the next thing you know, you have rotational access, and it just speeds up the timing until such a time as you're up to, you know, whatever the RPMs are supposed to be. So that all gets handled by this ESC, electronic speed control, which runs the brushless motor up front. But to be clear, there's also another little fancy dancy device in there called a BEC or a battery eliminator circuit. In this case, it's a switching battery eliminator circuit, hence the S back. Okay, I need this to not move. If you could hold that down, it'd be really helpful. Thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. It's so dang slick. Oh, for God's sake, frustrating guys. I had the same problem when I was building that blue plane over there right now, uh, here a few weeks ago when we were putting that together and it just kept sliding all over the place and it was driving me nuts. Usually the plane stand kind of esquanges you from that issue, but for whatever reason, this one in particular has very short leads too. Mm -hmm. All right, so now the motor's hooked up and as you can see, it's trying to slide down. So now our next move is we need to get this thing energized. And in order to do that, we're probably gonna need to clean things up a little bit and come right back. All right, so our next move is to test the LEDs. Now we have two wires to plug in for the wings, okay? So we never did actually plug those in, we passed them through. Now we just need to figure out how exactly they plug in, okay? So just keeping in mind that there's uh, male and female connectors and it looks like this one probably goes to that one. And then the other one is kind of buried under here. So I need my bent tip. And so guys, we just took a minute and went through the manual to kind of understand a little bit better how the receivers are gonna work in here. And the cool thing about this is it's designed to work with remote receivers. So I'm actually quite excited to try. Gosh, how the heck is this supposed to work? This is, oh, you know what it is? it's supposed to plug in over here. So I wonder if that's actually supposed to go back. Man, that is like really tight. You see what's going on here? 
that wire, do I need to, is it possible I need to pull it in? No, that's all the way. You see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to this, but you know what? That can be pulled wherever. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just oh. loose. Okay. okay, well that makes things a little easier. Okay, so this needs to plug in and it looks like they just kind of covered them with goop, which is kind of weird. Okay, so that's plugged in. Then we need to plug in the wings. Now, I don't know if this is just splitting off or if there's certain of these that are gonna cause the lights to flash. Black is up, red is down. But we'll find out in just a few seconds, folks. So it shouldn't really be too big a deal. Okay, black is up. Oop, that, that is from the same thing. Oh, that plugs to the other side then. I would assume. Yeah, it does. Okay. Now we'll have to do a little bit of cable management at some point, but for now this will at least get us started and then we can play with the way the wires are routed if we have any problems. So this is our first go round with the Flex Innovations um, system. And so we're actually kind of excited to see how this works. Of course, I'm always leery because we're, you know, as you know, uh, Horizon fanboys, as some of you guys would say, and there's nothing untrue about that. We really do like Horizon stuff, and not just because we work with them, but because when we weren't working with them, we still like their stuff. And at the end, it was getting kind of irritating because we're doing a lot of work covering a lot of their products before they finally decided to work with us. And, you know, we got lucky and they decided to, and so now here we are. But at the end of the day, we are not owned by any brand, even though we do appreciate Horizon. We appreciate a lot of the brands for different reasons. So hopefully this is gonna be great. All right, so now that, I feel like there's one more that's gonna plug in somewhere and I just missed it somehow. Like one that should go to the tail, but of course I don't see anything that goes back to the tail because I think it all goes through the actual wiring of these things. Okay, so now we're just gonna plug this into our balance lead. And of course, this is gonna plug in with the negative most over here. Okay, that should give us power. Oh, whoa. Oh, wow. That's bright. Okay. Well, we definitely Perfect. have that correct. <laughs> and that is pretty sweet. So now there's also different modes, if I understand right. Oh, really? Well, there's, there's the other little plug, and I don't know if maybe that's just like a plug that you can use to steal power from your BEC as opposed to the balance lead, because you see you've got this. Whoa, did you see that? Mm -hmm. That was like way super touchy something. I don't know what the heck that was, but I'm gonna, whoa. What is that? What's going on there? That'd be bad if you were flying at night and that happened. I don't know what the deal is. I'm gonna unplug this. We're gonna plug in our XBC battery checker and we're gonna go into servo test and just turn that on, which should energize this. And my, my sneaky suspicion is, nope, see that's negative to signal. Okay, so now that must actually do something in coordination with power that's being applied from a separate 3S pack. That's, okay. Cool, look, when it's on, the lights are on. When it's off, the lights are off. Pretty sweet, right? Okay. So really bright. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. They are very, very bright, but that'll be nice when you're trying to fly at night. And so that's actually pretty cool. Now, that being said, we also have better battery choices than a 3S 1300. That's a lot of weight. What we'll probably end up using is something that we've used from like one of our micro planes or some you know, really small 3S battery, like maybe something like this, you know, from one of our UMX planes. Oh. Okay, that would be a great way to go to energize those lights, or maybe even some other combination therein. But I might just take a quick second. Let's grab this and just make sure it energizes everything. Of course, this is small. It's not gonna add a lot of weight to the aircraft. Let's just make sure it works. All right, so regular Hextronics balance lead. Oh yeah, works Good. fine. 
Pretty sweet, right? Cool. Okay, so now that we know that that works, we can establish how we're gonna handle it. Now, I'm not real thrilled that they put a 6S connector on there because I guarantee you there's gonna be people that try to put a 6S balance lead in there and it's gonna toast it, mm. I believe. So anyway, we're gonna pause and come right back. All right, so now that we've tested this lighting circuit, we can just kind of tuck this down so that it's out of the way. I kind of am nervous about the way that that wire is set up because we've got this little doohickey here and there's no good way to protect that. And so I think this is ultimately going to be down here and we may not even use it in our maiden flights because it's probably not gonna be flown at dark because it's very, very hard to film such things in the dark. Even if you have night flying capabilities, it's not necessarily easy to film. So we'll probably just tuck all these wires under here for now. And this is the flight controller. So it's actually spatially aware. You need to make sure that that stays. Oop, see I tangled under my wires. I gotta go under with this. Do you see what I just did? I just caught that. I'm gonna fix it right now. Um, that's one thing you wanna do when you're when you're doing your cable management, a little bit of time is usually the best way of, of doing it because you're gonna catch stuff like that from time to time that may go unnoticed initially. And then once you notice it, you can resolve it. I must say, the way these are not supported or stuck to anything feels a little rinky-dink. I'm glad that the lights are bright and I'm glad that all that works, but I'm a little bit disappointed in how that went well, together. And there's another connector on yeah there. there's actually two styles of connectors and that's fine i'm just going to actually drop these both down they don't need to plug into one another so that's fine i'm actually going to pull both of those down one of which is going to plug into it's just basically an expansion plug is what i'm looking at it like oh so there's this plug here that we didn't use on the actual light controller so we'll just plug that one in Okay, so we're good there. All right, so that's all ready to go for when and if we decide to add the light function later for evening flying. But otherwise, this thing has a Velcro around it, which is gonna be for nothing, probably. Because to be honest, I don't know why we're gonna need it or if we're gonna need it. So our next move is we could mark for center of gravity but I think we can't really test it, so we'll come back to that because we don't have the prop on. What I want to do next is I want to go ahead and set up the model in our radio system. So we should be able to abandon our plane stand and come back to that when we're ready to actually put our controls back in. So we read the manual, and what I'm going to do is just walk through some of the different choices here. Now the manual does outline this pretty clearly, and so we hope that it's correct. We can use this style, which is like this, one of these, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is a DSMX remote receiver. And you see how it's got three wires on the connector. This would be like the old style, but you're like, there's no bind plug on there. And there's no bind button. Same thing here. This one just happens to have a longer antenna. Model numbers are only one apart. Okay, then over here, we've got this newer style, which is SRXL2. And as you can see, there is a bind button there and I'll press it just so you can hear. Okay. And then this one supports telemetry as well. And if you look close, that's got a four wire. Now this one here has also got a four wire. Okay. So it's got four pins. So in order to actually use that, you need to provide a special cable, which you can purchase from Flex. This is the part number if you need that, or you can just take the provided cable right here and you can chop that off somewhere along here and then build your end corresponding to their demands from this pin out here. Or what I've done is I've printed off this page to show you this if you ever need to use this style, okay? So it shows where the wires are. So you have signal, then no connection, then V plus and ground. And as you see here, they show that too. So we have signal and then V plus and then ground. Okay. So that's one wire gets unused. Okay. So 
I don't think we're gonna go with that one today just because I don't feel like it adds anything to the model in this case. And the other thing you can do is you can actually run in a, you know, serial port, a serial connection through one of these regular full size. They're showing that plug sideways there. Okay. So that is a different setup or Futaba, which I don't want to speak to because it's not my area of expertise. Okay, just be careful. Futaba's throttle channel can actually be reversed. Our throttle channel should be in the correct direction. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go with the one that has the short antenna because that's going to be fine for what we need. So we will link to what we used in this case. And I'm actually not sure how many channels. So this one here is how many channels? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find that out after we build it. So I'm gonna just pull out the provided cable and then the provided receiver. Now we have tried using these in the past in a couple of different applications, but this, this utility is, this Aurora is designed to adapt using these little serial receivers and they have set it up so that you can use your bind plug in S8. So power on the aircraft with the transmitter and aircraft powered off, place a bind plug on the Aurora port S8, okay? So we're gonna use this and you'll notice that it looks just like the one in the picture, which is kind of handy. But as you know, if you've ever used one of these, you have to either bind them with an accessory device or you have to actually plug them in and then provide the correct serial pulses to actually bind from the flight controller. And that's what this one's gonna do, okay? So we got a nice lengthy cable, okay? And this is gonna plug in here, just like that. And then we'll take that plug. The other end will go into the Aurora. Okay, so let's do that right now. Now this is not gonna need to be spatially aware because that's gonna be spatially aware. And if you kinda, I have to flip this up, probably vertical. Okay. So if you can just put one hand here. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, it's actually, I lied. It's on the other side. Sorry guys. Oh, I see it. It's right there. Now I don't remember which one they care. I think it's the one we want to use this closer to the outside is what they designate. I don't know if it matters, but there's actually room for two plugs and I have it upside down. So put it like this and then it just snaps right in, which is really nice. So you can see that'll make for a nice clean install and then this can go wherever you want. So in my case, for the moment, just until such a time as we have established if this is going to work, because we've tried a number of different planes, this one is the first that's actually called out this exact receiver or a receiver just like it. So I'm actually pretty excited to get a chance to use it, okay? So now all we need to do to bind it is to actually bind to our profile and use a bind plug. And so if you're anything like me, you have four million of them lying around in every different conceivable spot. Yes. There's a bind plug. Yes, Look at that. All exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and plug this in and I actually have my batteries charged. So we need to have, instead of an XT 90 or excuse me, XT 60, we need an EC three. So we should be good to go there. Now this is gonna remain unpowered for now. And we don't have to worry about dangers of getting cut by the prop because this is the first time I've ever set up one of these Auroras, so I'm gonna be careful. S8 is opened. So I'm gonna put the bind plug on to S8, so it should be forced into bind mode now. And I'm gonna simply lay, okay, let's check out the strap. Get that strap pulled out. And I'm just gonna kinda make a pocket. Okay, to slide this under, yeah. Might wanna do shelf liner on this one too. But yeah, that'd be super easy to load. And then that's ready to plug into the ESC when we get ready to do that. So I'll just go ahead and plug in only the negative to the negative for now just to hold everything where it sits. Now we don't have linkages installed. We don't have the prop installed. We understand this is kind of a hybrid step because we are about to set up our profile in the radio. We still have to check the CG. We still have to do quite a bit of stuff. So that's our next move. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the transmitter. 
And we've got the pits here. So we're gonna hit back and cancel and go to model select, add new model and create. We had to turn that away for just a second. Okay, so that took a second because we have so many. Model select, we already did. Model type, we've already done. And then model name, this is where we're gonna type it in. So this is called the Flex Innovations, um, what is this, the RV8 10E. So we'll scroll that in and come right back. Okay, so we got the RV8 10E Aura 1280 millimeter. So it is the Aura, I keep saying Aurora, and I'm sorry guys, it's just my mistake. It's still new for us, so I'm saying it wrong. And that's my bad. All right, so now also it's the it's the Aura 8, meaning that it's like an eight channel sort of setup, okay? Now there's supposed to be a flight mode, but the flight mode is designated by a channel, correct? The channel is gear assigned to a three switch, three position switch. So channel five does need to be reassigned somewhere. I don't know like where we're gonna assign it, we want, the flaps assigned to something, so channel six, auxiliary one. So auxiliary one would normally be switch D because we don't actually set up flaps on this plane. What you do is you just set up the aircraft type as a standard normal plane. Do you even do flaps? One aileron. One aileron, one elevator, run rudder. Yeah. So then in selecting an image, this is actually pretty close to the image. Mm -hmm. Although I think there's one that's closer. Let's see if we can find that real quick because it kind of reminds me, maybe not. I think we'll just leave it as a standard acro. Okay, and then flight mode, we're not gonna really set up a flight mode, but you could if you wanted. You can set up flight modes to the gear channel if you want, okay? And that'd be any three position switch, but some people want all three modes. I may only want two, and here's why. There's one that is going to be, where did we read about those? I think go back one page. There you go. There. So it's gyro on, gyro off, gyro on, and then gyro on. So sport and advanced. So I don't know what the three modes mean. So we'll probably have to do a three position switch. So we'll have to set it to switch D, which I don't like going to switch D because it's harder to get to. Um, Hmm, channel assign. We could set gear to switch C too, but that's so unusual for yeah. us. I think we just have to swallow our pride and do switch D. Okay, so now that we're in the regular mode, the first thing I wanna do is set up throttle cut. So switch H. And as you can see, throttle cut is on. When I shut the switch off, it's good to go. And I mean, this is throttle cut on. And we're not gonna do dual rates in Expo. They suggest not doing it on here. You're supposed to do it through the Aurora and they suggest a four minute flight timer uh, to start with a one out. At one minute, I want a voice. At 20 seconds, I want nothing. At 10 seconds, I want a voice countdown. At expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. We should be good to go. It's just now throttle cuts on and we'll be ready to bind. Um, wait, are we? I think so. That's auxiliary two. We want that to control auxiliary one. System setup, disconnect RF. Channel assigned, so auxiliary one is gonna be switch B. Auxiliary two is inhibit, okay? Now when we go over, that's not changing one, that's good. We don't want A to make a change. We want this to be auxiliary one, and we want this to be nothing, and we want this to be gear, okay? So that's our modes. All right, we may need to switch the direction to travel on some of these, but we're gonna be ready to bind and that's what we're doing next. So the next move is I'm going to throttle cut. I'm gonna to go to bind, be prepared, binding. It's probably too early. It's gonna time out almost certainly, it always does. Plugging this in, you can see our receiver is in a fast flash bind state. So now I'm gonna click, scroll down to bind. Got it. Very cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the bind plug out. All sorts of lights going off on this. I have no clue what any of it means and I don't care at this point. 
because really at this point, I see controls. Those are some quiet servos. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's those are really some nice, bright actually. Lights. Bright lights is right. Okay, so now what we can do is we can check this out. Elevator, can tell it's moving, but it's not hooked up to anything. Roll, oh, that's a cool sunset. Show the people quick. Too bad we couldn't fly right now. I know, it's horrible. Okay, so the rudder is moving and we wanna make sure that the rudder is over here, which it is, and the elevator is over here, which it is. Okay, so ailerons, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, that's pretty nice, don't have to do any setup. And then sport mode. Oh, there you go. Okay, so then that mixes all that in, and then this all. Okay, so our next move is we just need to make sure that we're not auto leveling, and I don't know how to tell for sure, but let's check. I don't think there is I don't think there is either. auto leveling. So, that makes it easy, so we should be able to set this up, no problem, because all I'm gonna do is just lay this down, it's funny because we've had so many steps in this plane where I thought, oh man, there's a lot of steps involved. And now we get to the part where it normally would be a lot of steps. What the heck is going on there? Oh, I gotta flip this around guys, sorry. We are gonna do some major cable management still, obviously. That's what we needed to do. Sorry folks. Now we need to set up the linkages and the controls, okay? Yes. For the elevator and rudder. Our, everything is centered, everything is where it needs to be. We need to get these ball links squared away on both of them. And then the next thing we need to do is actually read in the manual to see where yeah. we're gonna put things. And then we have to have our controls ready to put together. So we're gonna get ourselves prepared and come right back for that. Four millimeter nut driver fits the nut. Phillips four millimeter fits the screwdriver. Okay, what we need to do for the elevator and, and rudder would be just like this, okay? So the ailerons and flaps are already done for us. The elevator and rudder goes to the outside on this and the outside on this. And then on the control arm of the servos, we have these big long arms. And so what I'm gonna do is on the elevator, which I'm looking at here, I'm gonna take this assembly. Gosh, this is gonna be awkward. I'm gonna to try to do it off the plane. Okay, take the nut driver, take the nut off. These are nylocks. So yes, they're gonna be difficult to do otherwise. And I wanna go one, two, how many holes are we talking about? Good Lord. It's already screwed out on this one. I don't know if I wanna go in like this. I'm assuming that's the way I wanna go. And then I wanna set this like that. And then I wanna put the nut on because that otherwise you're gonna reach all the way in. I don't know which way to do that. Mm. I don't think there's really like a right way or wrong way. So let's just do it the, the easy way. Okay. So I'm gonna put the screwdriver on the back side. I'm gonna go until it's tight, okay? Okay, so now it's tight and you're like, well, well don't you want the ball to spin free? No, it'll, it'll have plenty of play on the actual ball. And then this is gonna be square now. And then we can unscrew here and we can unscrew there for our fine tune adjustments. So I want that square, but you see how it's not quite square. It's either past or it's a little bit behind. Okay, so that's good. Now I'm gonna take this super small screw here, which I think this is the one we need here, but we only had one of those. So that's a little bit disappointing because we do need the other one, I think. Don't we? Yeah, that's definitely the right one. Mm, yeah, we should. Maybe okay, one. so now looking at the elevator, the elevator is gonna go up and down, up and down, very basic stuff, not anything too complicated. And what we need to do is we need to go to the outside hole or the top in this case, since it's upside down, and we want it to be square like this. So if you look at that, we're not lined up. Can you give them a view so they can see where that hole lines up with the bushing? Up here, Megan. See that, how it's like past? Mm -hmm. So this is the angle right there, okay? And then I'm gonna hold this. And then what I have to do is I have to either screw this in here or I have to screw this in over here. Okay, so I'm gonna just, oh man, that thing's hard to turn. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half turns. Let's see how that looks. Then I just hold this 
Okay, I went too far, so I'm gonna go six. Okay, so there's half a turn out. And we're we're pretty dang close. That's that's gonna get us where we wanna be. Okay, so now same thing I did on the last one. The only difference is I can't get anything back there to hold the nut. So in this case, I'm gonna go from the front through. It's a nylock, of course. So like this. I'm gonna get that lined up. That feels pretty good. The trouble is I'm gonna have to find something to hold on to this, which I'm assuming they were probably thinking we would use a pair of needle nose pliers or forceps. So I'm gonna use needle nose pliers and I can grab the nylock, okay? I do actually have a really small box end wrench set that would do the same thing. Might be a little bit more appropriate, but this will be fine. So we're just gonna torque that down until it pulls the whole assembly tight. Now you'll notice that I could have done the same thing out here and I probably should have, but I was just concerned about the clearance. Okay, so there's the elevator. So that's going the correct direction too. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to go over to the rudder, okay? So the rudder does move the elevator in the advanced mode. That's normal, that's part of the mixing, but I'm in basic mode right now. All right, so this one needs to be in a slightly different hold position, and since I did it the same way, I plan to do it the same way again. Okay. High percent. Okay, so we are going to probably get this done, and if we lose track of you for a second, we'll come right back. Okay, so this one needs to be uh, three holes out. Three holes out, meaning we're gonna pass through here, and we're going to be on the third hole out. Okay, and then same thing like what we did before, except I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut on the inside this time, only for the sheer fact that I found that it didn't really gain us much on the other side. Okay, so once this is done, we can do the exact same thing we did on the elevator, except over here. So we wanna kinda of get that square. So it's as close to 90 degrees as possible, and that's not always possible because it's wherever the servo happens to be, okay? And then this needs to be centered as well on the outside, okay? So I'm gonna grab this and turn it in one, two, three, four, five and a half, okay? And as you can see, we have to kind of line this up so that it's centered. Okay, I need a half a turn out. And then we're pretty much where we need to be. It's hard to tell without actually putting the screw into the hole and so we're gonna do that next. And so folks, this thing is almost ready. If you wanna help support our channel, what you can do is buy the plane from the link in the video description below that helps to support us and the vendors that we work with to help bring these planes to market in our little simple reviews that we do. And hopefully we've helped you out in some special way. And if not, but you still enjoyed watching us struggle through, then smash the like button. But we also, ask you to consider being a Patreon. We've got about 30 or so that are doing that now and it's super nice to have people supporting us, but we would rather you buy planes from the links than even support us on Patreon because that is gonna be a win-win for everybody. I feel like I'm not quite square. I need to come out half a turn, don't Just I? Just a little bit, yeah. Um, okay, so let's go half, whoops, half out. And then I have to drop the screw out. And so if you guys are worried about... That's better. Mm, no, it's not. It's not enough. I need to go more. more. I need to go out another half at least, maybe another full. All right, guys. So camera died. Sorry. So we have the nut driver, and we are going to put this last nut on. We have the rudder turned square. And off camera, I admittedly fixed one thing, and that is I wanted my screw to be the same direction here as everything else. So I flipped it around real quick. Okay, so we're gonna drop that in there and on the elevator we can actually, or excuse me, on the rudder, we can actually get in there from the bottom. And then I figured out one other thing too while I was kind of waiting on the battery to charge on the 
a cell phone. Some of you guys ask us what we use to film with. We use a Galaxy, uh, Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. Mm -hmm. Currently. Currently. Before that was uh, the S9, right? Mm -hmm. I had an S7, an S5. And this an S is S3. the screw that I put, and then before that an S3. In here, mm -hmm. that was wrong. These are the screws that are supposed to be in there. They're quite a little bit smaller, but it is actually going to work. And they came in the bag. So I don't know what that last screw goes to, but we're gonna find out here pretty quick. So I'm just tightening these in, then we can show you all the different actions. Also, I discovered one other detail that I don't quite, uh, that was surprising. It's not that I don't understand what's going on, but it's annoying. I had to go to like minus 13 on the throttle to get it to arm the throttle. And then it kicked in and I ultimately put it to minus 15. Well, the problem is then my throttle cut doesn't work. And so you'll want to be real careful about that. Okay. So we've got that all put together. So now our elevator, ailerons, rudder. Okay. See, as I put the throttle cut on, it now starts spinning. So I have my throttle stick down, but I have my throttle cut off. We have a few things we need to fix. Namely, we have to do a throttle calibration, which we're gonna do now. So in order to do a throttle calibration, I'm gonna unplug the battery. Okay. I'm gonna put my throttle range back to where I want it. Center it, look, make sure we're all the way down, all the way up. Okay, throttle cut is on, throttle cut's off, throttle cut's on, stick is down. I want throttle cut off and stick all the way up. You may wanna calibrate your throttle range if it's messed up. Now we're gonna plug it in whilst the throttle is all the way up. Listening. All the way down. Should boot. Waiting for the boot process. If it doesn't boot, then I'm gonna go up and then back down. And then we'll see what happens. Usually it, it takes a second for you to enter the sequence and usually it reboots automatically. So I don't know if it got at that time. There is also instructions included. So I'm gonna go throttle cut is on, off and throttle is all the way up. Now I'm gonna plug it in again, listing again. This is after you've bound and the radio system is working, okay? So it's acting like I'm, I may have bumped my throttle stick on the startup. Okay, throttle stick is all the way down. Throttle cuts on, in fact. We're gonna try this again. The instruction manual is included in the manual somewhere. And this shows you how to do that if you wanna read Chinese. So they say basically download the manual. I'm not downloading the manual. Okay, throttle cuts off, throttle sticks all the way up. Plugging this in to arm it. All the way down. I don't know if I didn't wait long enough or what the deal is. All the way up, all the way down. It's unusual. Usually you can do that for a throttle uh, calibration, but it's acting like it's not saving it. So I'm gonna go ahead and de-energize. I'm gonna re-energize with my throttle cut on like a normal startup routine and see if it actually did save. Okay. Okay, so the stabilizer and everything is coming alive, which is good. Okay, as you can see, I move my sticks, things move. When I go to the Extreme mode, things move further, okay? But there's no throttle. Okay, so throttle cuts off, throttle sticks up, throttle sticks down. So it's still not armed right. So I'm gonna unplug the battery, throttle cuts off, throttle sticks all the way up. Plugging in power, listening, being patient. Okay, all the way down. Now it's at the throttle range. Okay, so I think we should be okay now. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the battery, set it, plug it in, throttle cut is on at this time. Okay, so we've got it, 
So now throttle cuts on and you'll notice there's no movement. Throttle cuts off, now it moves, okay? So which direction are we going? We're going, feels like it's going that way, towards you, which would be the wrong way, okay? So color for color was not correct as expected. Okay, throttle cuts on and tested. So what else do we need to do for cable management while we're in and about it? We're gonna take one singular zip tie. Don't mind my little countdown timer. We're just gonna tie this up right now, right here. And what this is gonna do is that's just gonna keep it nice and tidy for us. Then we're gonna cut it with a zip tie or we're gonna cut the zip tie with side cutters. And that's all we have to do for cable management on this process. It's pretty, pretty straightforward process actually. I can't believe how easy that was. Once we got set up, mm -hmm. mechanically assembled and all that, it was really, really easy, okay? So I'm actually gonna tuck this underneath my bulkhead and then we'll be done, okay? So easy peasy. Right, so now we've got our throttle set up, but now we need to switch our leads for two of the three wires. So unplugging that, doesn't matter which two, you can also rearrange the setup by going through setup in your uh, programming guide, which we don't have, please do hold that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter which two you switch, any two you change, it'll change the direction of travel. Okay, so I'm just gonna undo this. I'm gonna go straight to the one that I unplugged and then run those suckers together. I'm gonna grab this. It's really nice when you've got two pairs of forceps. Uh, if you're getting forceps, don't get just one pair, get two, okay? Now that should switch the direction of rotation. Throttle cut is on, plugging in the battery, waiting for initiation. Okay, throttle cuts off. Okay, so now that's spinning. going that way so that means the prop is going to can you come around here so they can see what I'm talking about so it's gonna go that way okay I don't even want to I don't even want to tempt fate because this thing's gonna have some power but I do need to tempt fate here pretty quick because at this point we're pretty much ready for the next step so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing twisted on once it's twisted on then we should be golden. We should be ready to rock and roll for the next step, which is, where the heck is my needle nose pliers? There they are. The next step is gonna to be to test all the control surfaces and everything, okay? So if you're nervous about the way I'm doing this, don't do it the way I did this. I unplugged the power, so that makes some of you naysayers a little bit more comfortable. I know some of you guys are concerned about that. And I'm telling you, you're gonna eventually have to handle this plane that's equipped with a battery and a prop and it's plugged in. It's called every time you fly it. So just use your best judgment. Whatever makes you feel comfortable is what you need to do, not what somebody else makes you, what somebody else makes you feel comfortable. What am I trying to say? When you have to do what makes you feel comfortable, Thank not you. whatever somebody that's else That's what says. I meant to say. And this is not wanting to go on, so I just don't wanna to have to go get a drill but we're probably gonna have to ream that out because it just does not wanna fit. Because this thing is definitely too tight to fit. So I could either try to ream it with this, which could be a little bit dangerous. We're gonna pause and get that taken care of. Okay, so we got it started and here it is. Now you can see we're just getting that all the way back to where it's tight. Okay but we still have a bit of a gap there. Now that gap is gonna get closed, hopefully when we put this on. If not, we will have to open up the hole just a little bit more. I want it as tight as possible without causing problems, okay? The battery is unplugged, so it's not just throttle cut, it's actually unplugged right now, just so you know. Okay, you do have to have this on at some point because we have to check the CG. Okay, so that's nice and tight now. And I did mar the edge of that. That really ticks me off. Dang, that was an accident. Okay, so there's that. Now we're gonna take, use a Phillips bit to pull this tip out. Probably the five millimeter would be better if you let me around. I'll get that. 
the bigger one. Make this just a little bit better, a little easier. A lot of threads, good Lord. Okay, then the spinner, as you can see, is just gonna kind of slide back on there. Have a nice clean look. Mm -hmm. Just get that going. Lots of machine threads. Okay, there we go. All right, very good. So that should make that a nice clean install. Now, let's talk about what else we need to do. We have it spinning the correct direction. We have all the electronics going in the correct direction, we think. Now we need to pause, we're gonna clean up stuff. We're gonna mark CG. Actually, let's mark CG before we clean stuff up. Okay. I just don't wanna accidentally blow stuff off the counter. So let's mark oh. CG. This is marked at 199 or 195 from the back edge of the wing. So they give it to us in, for sport, 199 inches is seven and 27, 30 seconds. Like, good Lord. Very Why? Specific. Well, yeah, because you're going by millimeters. So 199, you see the problem with that? You can only go 150 on my calipers, as is typical, and you're only then whatever the balance of the wing is. So I have no idea why they decided to measure from that side. Uh, it just baffles me. Just really baffles my mind. Okay, so seven and 27, 30 seconds. Okay, so that's like a super easy one to count out. So 27, 30 seconds would be seven and 27, 30 seconds. So we have two, four, six, eight. That's uh, 10, 12, 14, sixteenths. So we have to go sixteenths. Okay, so that would be eighths. So those are sixteenths. So 27, 30 seconds. Oh, good God. Well, the other thing we could do is we could just measure out to seven. Okay, we could get our initial mark. Okay, so seven gets us right to the top, which will be here, okay? So there's seven, and I can mark that with just a bump, okay? So then that becomes our seven inch mark, okay, as you can see. Now I need to go 27 37 So if I go to inches, oh, it's decimal inches, 27 30 seconds. Okay, so we'll pause and figure that out. All right, so we did the measurement to seven. Now we just need to add 21.4 millimeters. Okay, so 21.4 would be 21.4 millimeters. Okay, good enough. That's one. That's our first mark, okay? So then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna mark that with the black dot like we normally do. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take seven and we're gonna add 15.875. That's how I'm doing it which is like, are you kidding me? Like anybody's, are you kidding me? There's the That's, diff, that can't be right. I mean, it's only a six millimeter range. Yeah, but that, I don't think I did something right. Cause I did 21.4, 21.4 to 15, I did 18, 15.875, there we go. 875, there we go. There it is, there's our difference. I was gonna say, there's no difference. All right, so now that we have those marked, we can go ahead and transpose those to the other side in a sensical manner, okay? So we're just gonna measure from the front to the back, okay? So who cares? That's 95, 95 millimeters to center of that mark. So 94.85 gives us our front mark, okay? And then on the back, we're gonna be 102.3. Okay, so now we can reinforce those with a big black mark. And as you can see, they look like they're further over there is the only thing that I don't like about that. And that's probably because they are a little bit further. But good enough for what we're doing, guys, because really, when you get into a foamy, that's like about as close as you can get. All right, so now we've got the center of gravity mark, but we have to test it. And usually what I like to do is I like to test where the CG is with the battery installed so that we can make our adjustments according to where everything is gonna sit. So we're gonna pause, get stuff cleaned up and come right back. All right, so we're ready to test this. The battery is in, RC Hackers 1300 milliamp 6S. 
oh, that happens to be a 100C pack. And then if we decide to put this little thing in, it's just gonna be what it is. It's such a minor difference. I'm not even really worried about the CG difference. Okay, so this is gonna be from like here to about here, okay? So I've got my lines in here and that just shows me roughly where that battery is gonna set. And then I have an arrow that shows what direction the wire is gonna come out. Now, one thing I can say is, what I wanna do is I wanna put a shelf liner in there, but let's check and make sure we're satisfied with the way the CG works out on this thing. Okay, so we got that thing closed. Obviously we've already tested this throttle cut for safety reasons, but you have to have the prop on to check the CG. It does make a difference, okay? Nose heavy on the back holes, tail heavy on the front holes. So that's right in the middle. That's what we want. Now, they're suggesting the center of gravity is for sport on one of the holes and aerobatic on the other holes, whatever. It's so small. You're barely gonna be moving that battery, okay? So I'm gonna undo this strap. You may wanna just shift it back a lot. You may wanna put a bigger battery in it, whatever. That's fine with, whatever you decide to do is fine with me, but that just becomes highly subjective at that point. This is definitely not gonna be like a super beginner plane. So I'm not really expecting anybody to be writing comments like complaining, oh yeah, this is my first plane. If you're doing this as your first plane, you're asking for failure. It's just, it's gonna be way more crazy than you can handle, okay? So the shelf liner's at an angle because there happens to be a big hole there. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do it kind of side by side like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this China glue, China from FMS, which is just pretty much identical to the other stuff. Um, so if you bought some from Horizon, some of the foam to foam, you'll be fine. We're just gonna literally put that down. We're gonna let that set up for a minute. And usually what I like to do, if you don't have an opportunity to wait for it a long time, you can actually stick it right in there and it'll work, but it's better if you can let it cook off for a minute and just chemically react to the air around it. And I'll take this Q-tip and just spread that around, kind of you know, get that stick them all over the place. And that's gonna be kind of like a padded envelope or something. You know, it's just gonna be real tacky. And, um, but it's it just, it's really strong. Like the difference is you can pick up your airplane by it, okay? And all you wanna do is just get as little as you can do and still make the thing work, okay? Cause it's gonna be annoying if you don't, okay? Now just let that set up for just a second. And usually what I do is I pause and we clean up. All right, so now this tacky, tacky side, you can see just sticking my finger, okay? We've let it set up for maybe a minute. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide this under and just drop it into our stickum. And we're pretty much done there, okay? Now, when we put this Velcro down, all we're doing is just applying a little bit of pressure from the top and that's gonna hold our battery right in the center or wherever we decide to put it. This is where I had it before. So I just kind of lined it up. It's kind of lines up perfectly on the front here. And that is if you use the same RC Hackers battery. Now I'm not saying you, you couldn't use some other battery, of course you could, but you're gonna have to be diligent to get your center of gravity just so, okay? So now that's in there and I'm just gonna show you with the canopy or the top open. It's not moving anywhere. And if you're doing that much of a jarring effect on an airplane, that means you're trying hard to crash or crashing. you've already crashed. Okay, so let's drop the lid back on close the hatch. I'm not crazy about this. It's, it's so smooth. It makes me nervous like it's going to pop off, but I don't know if it will. Now, one thing I want to test is control directions. Okay. Also, I want to talk about percentages. There was a mention that all the aileron elevator and rudder needs to go up to 125%. So servo setup, travel, 125, elevator is 125, and then rudder is 125. Okay, so that's normal. Okay, so now elevator going up, going down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. Okay, elevator or takeoff with the correct direction of deployment for flap correction, that's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And same thing on flaps, okay? Now we're gonna go into our middle mode. Verify, 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 verify. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. Now we're gonna go into crazy mode. Elevator up, elevator down, roll left, roll right. Look at that. That's kind of weird. Why is that? 
Is that the way it's supposed to be? I don't know. You guys see that? That side doesn't do it. Mm -mm. That's weird. That is weird. Okay, now I don't remember seeing that before, so I'm gonna go to ailerons and set that to zero. Oh, that's still got it. It's still a little bit of a disparity. Well, but there's a little bit of a disparity here. And there's a little bit of a disparity here. Let's go travel. Let's exaggerate it and go past 125 and see what happens. No, yeah, we're still good there. It's just like it's maybe hitting, hitting an end. No, I can't say that it is. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aileron travel back to 125. All right, so I guess we'll see how it does. My guess says that's probably mixed in to compensate for some sort of an asymmetry and roll rate, okay? All right, so into regular, this, this is our normal mode, then this is a little bit more aerobatic mode, and then this is the crazy mode. So elevator up, elevator down, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, and yet we still have a mix, which is pretty sweet actually. And then we have throttle cut currently on. I'm gonna test it again, even though I've tested it multiple times. It's tested as good. Now throttle cuts off. I'm gonna test it again. It's blowing toward us. Okay, so throttle cuts on. This thing is definitely gonna hover. And this thing is totally set with the exception of now that throttle cuts on, we can check the we can check the correction direction, okay? Correction direction. I don't feel anything, I'm gonna to go to the middle setting. I do now, okay? So I'm looking at the rudder, I'm looking at the rudder, I'm looking at the elevator, I'm looking at the elevator, I'm looking at the aileron, I'm looking at the aileron, I'm looking at the aileron, looking at the aileron, and I want you guys to see what I'm doing, so I'm gonna grab the camera and I'll show you, okay? So I'm just moving the rudder, just moving it down, you see it goes down, moving it up, it goes up, moving it down, it goes down, Moving it up, it goes up. And if you can't see it, you can touch it. Okay, elevator up, elevator up, elevator down, elevator down. You can see it at the tip of the elevator, okay? Very hard to film that. Roll this way, aileron up, aileron down, aileron up, aileron down. Same thing over here, aileron down, aileron up, okay? So that, con that concisely confirms the direction of travel is correct. Now I'm gonna go into extreme mode Okay, and I'm gonna see what happens. Okay, so up, down, really easy to see, 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 really easy to see. So, what have we concluded? We've concluded that everything seems to work on this model, with the exception of one feature, and it'd be cool to see it. I don't know where I can land my cable to turn on and off the LEDs. The LEDs are the internal LEDs that we would run off of a separate 3S battery pack. But honestly, I don't care if I'm gonna be running that, I'm probably gonna be running it on all the time. And I'd really like to see if I can plug in my 6S battery and power it that way, because I'd really far prefer doing that. So otherwise, gotta say, very cool controls, very easy to set up. I'm still not sold on this. I think there might be something not quite totally kosher right there. But we'll see. I wanna fly it and see how it does. And also, I'm kind of beginning to believe that stabilizer off is in this setting. So I kind of want to change my digital switch setting, and I'll tell you why. Let's come around here. Normally when I set up my stabilizer, regardless of brand, I like to have my switch so that my, no my nominal flight mode is here. Then this would be my off and this would be my like crazy or auto leveling or something like that. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna just go down to digital switch setup. I'm gonna select switch D. And so in this case, I want this to be 100 here. Okay, and then I want that top one to be zero. And then it's gonna basically do exactly that. So I'm gonna scroll this down to zero and then we should be good to go. Okay, so now watch this. So now I'm in my stabilized mode, off, and then crazy mode. Okay, pretty cool. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully we answered lots of questions for you. We're about to lose the battery again, so forgive us for wrapping this up quickly. Thanks so much for watching our radio setup of this 
Flex Innovations RV8 10E. We're excited to see how it does. If you wanna support our channel, the best thing you can do is buy stuff in the links in the video description below. If you don't like this plane, we've done tons of other planes, literally hundreds of them. And we've done other things that are not planes too. So check them out. If you need somewhere to find lots of different stuff in a concise area, it's brianphillipsrc.com. That's our domain. And obviously if you see links that are bprc.me, that's our domain as well, which is gonna help you to know that it's valid. So if you get something else that's bit.ly or something like that, we also have some of those floating around. But if you ever have questions, just check it out. Holler at us in the about section if you have something questionable in terms of business offerings, or if you're with Flex and you wanna work with us, hit us up. Maybe we're getting into your spam email, but all I know is we're not hearing back from you. So hopefully this video produces some sales for you and you'll enjoy the feedback that you get from the customers. So anyway, you guys are the customers and so we wanna serve you best. So hopefully this thing is as awesome as everybody says it's going to be but we never know until we know. It looks pretty good right now. So stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.